And basically for Justin in like a, in a 10 hour turnaround from the moment they like asked him, he was doing something with, you know, something personal over there in Denmark. He packed all that up, went straight back to Copenhagen, went straight into this Australis facility they have in the last couple of days he's been playing. So he's probably going to be going in with five or six days practice at most, right? Of being off. So expectations, you know, probably not very high, but if he had been playing the full time, this could have been a great opportunity for him. Add some fun to your space with Extrify, designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4, their fourth generation of products with super cool colorways to stand out, with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 bungee, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with Extrify, no regrets, Guaranteed. Comes go to the teammates. I wanna see you fall and fast. Win the round. Win the game. Parry match. Your esports teammate. Hey buddy, let me show you how to fix that. Bitskins.com. Buy and sell skins instantly. Deposit and withdraw funds instantly with crypto or directly to your Visa card. Bitskins.com. The best skin marketplace. S Club, there ain't no party like an S Club party. And you have Striker and myself here, Sponge, in case you didn't get it, on a Saturday night to bring you all the party action. Now, if you're not rehashing uh, the late 90s, early 2000s with me right now, that's fair enough. But you are with us here at HLTV Confirmed Season 6. We're back on a Saturday evening to preview. Katowice are coming up just around the corner. Quick shout out to the sponsors, Bitskins. We got Parry Match and we got Extra Fire. You hear them every day of the week. You saw the ads just there and you'll see more throughout the show. Thank you to them for supporting. And we also have a nice new little addition that Lucas wants me to, uh, well, tell all the viewers about. If you do want to subscribe, uh, Lucas, play it. There's a subscribe notification thing that's going to pop up on the screen for all of y'all. So uh, basically, we're trying to shake you down for money now. Uh, this podcast will eventually be, be, become uh, pay to watch and uh, just get used to it. So probably start subbing now. Uh, all right. Jokes aside. Uh, and we're not talking about my career, but I'm I'm here all week. <laughs> it's late, <laughs> boys. It's late. I have a coffee at 8 p.m. You're going all out today. I like it. But this is the thing. I've been like on like pseudo holidays, right? Up until this point, right? I haven't had to go. I besides coming to do the 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 show we did, I haven't had to go anywhere all year. And now we're going. Tomorrow's the day. It doesn't even feel like it's going to happen. And I feel like that's the general consensus right now with Katowice. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, but we're, we're going back to arena events again. We've got like another car stalling situation. Now I'm rambling already. Now let's, let's have our introductions here. But I want to ask you a question, Striker. You seem like a man who's less of a mess than me. I just, because Prof asked me what I was eating just before we came live. I was eating a piece of bread with cheese. Now I, I explained to you guys why I have to do that. But I don't want to explain it to the viewers. I want to explain how I even got into that position. So I had leftover curry. Nice chicken tikka masala. I didn't have anything to go with the curry, no rice, but I had fries in the freezer. Keeping in mind, I had to get rid of all the stuff from the freezer. I thought, <laughs> what about some air fried? It actually sounds pretty good. It was I'm terrible. sold for now. It was, it terrible. was terrible. It was terrible. I couldn't eat it. It was no good. But my point is here is striker. What is the weirdest concoction of food that you've ever put together? Wow. We can we can take our time on the intro tonight. We don't have a guest. Wow. I actually I can't think like I'm generally not super adventurous around food. Prof will know that I have just no, no, no real standards when it comes to food. I just like Bologna pretty much is. everything, but I don't really do like weird combinations or, I mean, like the weirdest combination that I do like is like a Hawaiian pizza, you know, and that's 
a Hawaiian pizza, the exactly. weirdest combination. Yeah. Pineapple, Very pineapple pizza. Very exotic here. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's like the only thing that actually comes to mind. I don't remember. And I don't remember doing anything weird, man. Not in recent times, anyway. Prof, you got anything less vanilla than a Hawaiian to, pizza? To be honest, like I probably had a couple of weirder things that I ate, but generally, I'd rather just like eat bread with nothing than combine like weird shit into it right i don't think there's there's no point in making like one thing that's like six out of ten on its own a three out of ten by combining it with another thing so that's kind of my rule when when doing and for food in general just bread or just like pasta without anything just plain pasta that that flies pretty well for, you for eat me. plain pasta I mean, if there is nothing to eat and there's some okay, like leftover right, pasta, right, then right, you're just like, right. whatever, might as well, like a small snack, you just eat it. The university mm. diet, surely, Lucas, you've got something adventurous for me. Surely. I, I, I can do surely. one. I can do one. Here we go. I mean, this is uh, going to be a bit weird. Uh, oh, it's meant to be weird. So uh, even even for Danish people. So as m some of you may know, we put like chocolate on the like breakfast uh, bread, you know? We put butter and then chocolate. Uh, Nutella okay. spread, right? No, because it's not Nutella. It's okay. like not Nutella. It's not. Okay. It it All it's right. literally like melted chocolate in thin wafers, like very thin chocolate. Okay. So we put chocolate on bread, right? Okay. And a you know. A uh, a kid's uh, dream is just taking all of the good breakfast items and then putting them all together. So we start with like butter, then we put Nutella, then you put like a slice of cheese, then you put chocolate, and then you put like jam. And then you have breakfast. What? The cheese there. Let's roll uh, the bumper, Lucas. <laughs> yeah, let's, let, yeah, let's start the show. Roll the bumper, Lucas. We're not shaming Lucas around here. We're just uh, waffling on a little bit. But uh, Strike, you thought of something in the quick little lab break? Yeah, I mean, I used to do, I used to make like pasta and beans, which is like a weird, I guess for a lot of people, a weird combination because I don't think I've ever actually eaten it outside of my own home. I've never actually seen anybody do it. So that's like the weirdest that I can think of. Pasta and beans. All right. Well, we'll make some notes. Maybe we can have some uh, at the Hatred TV Christmas party. These can be the specialty items or something like that that Martin can set on the table. Um. Boys, as I mentioned, uh, it's obviously the Katowice show, I guess, before the play-ins, it's kicking off here. But we do have a bit of housekeeping we need to get out of the way first. Um, so that's why we're jumping into the recent news. Now, uh, I saw this news come out. I read it. Oh, no. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Uh, obviously, the Valens coach bug situation. But the problem is, I feel like I have coaches doing bad thing lethargy at the moment. Like, <laughs> you know, everything you, you don't, you never hear a good thing about a coach. When was the last time you ever heard a good thing about a coach, right? And I'm not saying there aren't good things to hear. It's just that all the press seems to be most of the time negative. Yeah. Coaches don't say anything in the major. Coaches cheating online. You know, obviously this is broad terms and I apologize for painting the coaches all with a, a brush, but the, like I heard this and I was just like, is this saga ever going to fucking end? Like Striker, is it going to end? What, 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 what's your summary of this whole Valen situation? I mean, the reason I was kind of meh about it, I didn't really care too much about it because is because we knew there were a lot of cases of these like smaller uses of the bug from a long time ago, you know, from months ago when um, E6 said that they were just like doing this investigation into some of these cases or even from like a year and whatever ago it is now that the, the investigation first kind of came to light. So we we've, we've known for a long time that there were, there were a lot of other cases that they just didn't know what to do with, you know, like whether they were going to punish them or how much. And and they were kind of trying to figure out with Valve how they would approach it. So to see somebody come to light at that at this point is not really a big of a surprise. I just I'm just kind of I don't really care about it too much unless I hear all of them. And I know that there are more. I just don't know who they are. So not really I don't honestly don't really care too much until we get some sort of a resolution for all of them. Especially yeah. because it's a guy who isn't even coaching anymore and doesn't seem like he is going to coach anymore. Does he since... still have some affiliation with EG? Yeah, he's the, he's the data analyst. Okay. Yeah. So it can be relevant in terms of maybe the Valve major rules and stuff like that. Let's say, you know, since no band players can be a part of the team and access team facility, not facilities, but like practice the rules and stuff areas, like yeah. that official areas yeah that's the term during majors so maybe that could be a thing that 
why it could be relevant uh, from that point of view. Uh, other than that, like for him personally, I don't really like who cars uh, really. Uh, he even said that he contacted, you know, the admins of the tournament. It was Epicenter, I think. I and, saw the conversation and, though, right? And there, and there was, uh, there, uh, you mean the first one or the second one? Because the, the admin who like had the reply. I think yeah. I saw. Yeah, there was uh, like uh, one of the admins replied first that he never got it, got in touch. Like Valens didn't talk about it, but then I saw another screenshot that he found from like a group chat where he did in fact like say that there was something going on. So from that perspective, not that bad from from his point of view. And then, yeah, I think <laughs> the only only reason why it's kind of relevant is because it puts a bit more pressure on Isik to do something. But uh, isn't it isn't it also like Valens? Didn't he have the opportunity to say something to Isik during the grace period? Right, like wasn't there a whole grace period? I mean, maybe, maybe, could, maybe I mean, he it's did. possible that he did. We just don't, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't know what to say about that. You're right. Putting pressure on Easy to do something about it. We haven't heard from them in a while. It's right? been like Things a like... year and a half since since this came out originally, and they kind of hinted at more coming out. But then, I guess the the angle from them is the bands that Valve implemented based on their kind of findings weren't in line with what they kind of think is right. So uh, one of the things is like Valve kind of simplified uh, the the numbers and the cases and everything. So if someone like used the bug it for five, for one round and five different matches, that could almost be like a permaban or something like that. I don't remember exactly. So, so then Isik was like, okay, we need to talk to Valve to kind of change this but from like the article that came out on the Serto, Valvian said that there's no like no idea to change anything about their approach isn't yeah. isn't the thing with this one though that it was like free look cam as opposed to like, stuck in one position yeah that yeah, was that, one of them yeah yeah that's that's basically like the biggest takeaway that I had from this as well that there was basically a new or maybe not well not definitely not new because this happened a long time ago right but like a previous that that we previously didn't know about version of this bug where you could actually roam around freely instead of you know as we know it to just be stuck in one spot and being able to oversee one specific area right uh, but i mean i would imagine this would have been caught if this you know somebody did this throughout the, an entire match or like more than like getting stuck in it and then just getting out of it uh we would have probably known about it from you know the way that uh mihal slovensky and then and, and uh i forgot the, the other guy's name Steve. but yeah, there you go. Um, how they found it out, I imagine they would be would have been able to um, to get these cases as well with the same um, the same sort of way. So I feel like it's probably not as big of a deal as it might sound. I, I think the thing is like it's just a shame that there's like still more stuff coming out about it. I think that's probably like if you look at it from a community sentiment, oh, we have to hear about this again, right? Because it's one of these things that I think everybody. Yeah. I, when I say just wants to move past, it's obviously you know, if you are a team or a player who was cheated against or a coach from another team or whatever, and, and it was used against you, like you you should be furious, right? But once we get into the weeds with all the things we're discussing here and the severity and then this and ESIC and Valve, and like it's one of the things is like, can we just, if we get back to land regularly, we can forget all about this online era and hopefully we can iron these things out in the future and learn from them and people can not yeah. do this shit, right? So, um, well, it's still going to be a problem like tier two and stuff like that because there's always going to be a lot of online events uh and in, in like other yeah at the lower tiers maybe Some not open the, qualifiers the top tier. yeah and there's a lot of open qualifiers that obviously have a lot of uh, a lot of impact on the tier one tournaments like major qualifiers and whatever else right so um it's obviously still kind of an issue that needs to be addressed right but we need um, like a whole reform of like go tv or like the way that the coach feature works or something or are we expecting things like this to crop up every now and again because i'm sure people at home can attest like when they play CS, so yes, I'm sure we've all had this bug before. Um, you know where you spawn in the sky, right? But yeah, you're yeah. obviously on the ground, and then you can you have see, to jump or crouch yeah, or something, right, to get exactly, out exactly to reset the position, like something like that. Maybe it's a simple, and I say simple. I don't know what causes that, but maybe it's something that is like a trigger to that as well. Like, are we ever going to get to the bottom of this? Do you think, or like, because this is the thing we're talking about it now. If something comes up with another coach in the future, we'll probably talk about it then. But that's the thing. It feels like this is just going to be one of those things that's constantly just dripping, right? Just a, it's a, it's a leak we 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 can't fix. Is that is that the gist of this? Like I, I hate that. It seems like such a defeatist view on all of this, right? Like it's bad stuff. We never are we ever going to be able to find a, an overall solution? Probably not. Not to people cheating. No. Yeah, no, I mean we're not, not a yeah, yeah. I'm not a developer. I don't know what the um what can be fixed, what can't be fixed about this. But obviously it's a game. There's going to be bugs, you know, and some of them are going to be more serious than others, right? So. I don't think I don't think you can ever make a game 100% perfect, you know, and you're just going to have to figure it out as you go.
Yeah. Okay. Let's move on from this one. We don't want to uh, read a dead horse any more so than we have. Uh, RMR dates and qualifiers. Now, this one here, you know, I see this stuff come out. Like, I see the RMR announcement. I'm like, yeah, okay. And then the event and the date and everything. I'm like, this, this seems fine. And then I have a look and there's a dumpster fire because I didn't look at the open qualifiers, which are now the next most important tournament after the RMR, right? So now it yeah. goes quite literally major RMR open qualifiers for the RMR, right? Like that's that's the hierarchy of events now as far as we're talking with the major. And there's been a lot of back and forth, Prof. There's been a, a lot of chopping and changing. Uh, what, what Have we come to a resolution just yet with the issues that surfaced around this uh, RMR mm -hmm. dates? I think there's going to be like a daily thread almost. like uh, With I one mean, team, with one issue, you know, maybe yeah, there's a cousin's wedding or some shit that it, they can't get out of. It isn't completely resolved yet, at least with the Asian stuff. Uh, even after the update that came out, from what I saw, some some teams are still unhappy. Lin Vision and uh, Vision, LFO. LFO. Yeah, yeah, so the Austra oh, Australian team and the Chinese team, which are simply boot camping in Europe and don't plan to come back uh, in time for that, or they have uh, Pro League coming, so they don't want to go back and forth, or even if they for like i think for china even if you go back you have to be in quarantine in a hotel room so that would be maybe technically possible to play from that but probably not the best conditions you can't probably get good internet even if you can get a pc in that so they essentially i think they're even asking if they can just play in europe which or by the <laughs> rules says no right the new rules yeah the court i actually don't know no. if these rules i mean that's something that came out of the 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 super outdated page but i'm not actually sure that it says that in the big rule book does it uh it it says that you have to i don't think it did in the in the big, that's the the thing is like did. a lot of people took that from like the super outdated link that, right, you know right. got yeah, cropped yeah, up yeah. but i don't think i don't remember reading this in any of the in the in the comprehensive rule book that valve actually put out so I'm not necessarily sure that this is something that they will have to abide by. And it would I, honestly, it would make sense to me if there was no citizenship rule and there's kind of like was more around where you just generally play, play right? Uh, because like the same thing kind of applies to North American teams or like, you know, South American teams playing in North America and stuff. I've got it here. Uh, team regional assignment. A team's region is determined by the citizenship of the majority of its players okay. in yeah, case right, of a tie right. the team chooses between the two. Yeah, I, yeah. So oh, it's there. Fair enough. It's, it yeah. gets sticky. It gets real sticky. In the past, there was that like. Uh, Why would you want to play in the EU on anyway? You're yeah, like, well, that's maybe the thing. Like, if you boys, like, what are we doing? If you're coming from a weaker region, then you could play, and you know, yeah. I, I feel like anyone should be able to play in Europe. Uh, that's yeah. at least my my opinion. Uh, it's just because it's super hard. You wouldn't play there if you didn't have to, right? Yeah, the problem with that is that'll just go the way the wind blows, right? Because, like, let's say, let's live in an alternate reality where Oceania just decides to be the best region in the world, right? And then it would be like, okay, like that rule would constantly have to trend with where the yeah. strongest region is. Obviously, I'm yeah. living in a place that's never going to happen. I know but it's they, a fantasy, yeah, realistically, but, not yeah, happen. We need to put that put that in line. Um, I wanted to ask, and 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 this is for either of you: could this have been avoided? I mean, a lot of this stuff could have been, I think, foreseen because they're all like uh, some of these clashes were very obvious, right? Especially with uh, the North American and European armor, yeah, where with they're, uh, yeah, with Katowice the and right? last spring showdown, yeah, exactly. So, like, some of these teams are obviously going to have to, well, would have had to to adjust their schedule, and there's still not really a resolution around an IP, I think, with the showdown and the oh. European armor. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to play in both. And they're both supposed to be played at the in the exact same dates, you know. Well, so I don't know if they're going to have contractually to... obliged, right? Yeah, that's also another thing. But I mean, obviously, like, like Blast is not going to just force an IP to to play in the showdown if like that's the only resolution, you know. If they have to leave it, that's so. I, I don't think that's going to be like a massive issue from that point of view. But it's still a problem, right? Yeah. Like at the same time, like it's it's super difficult in CS to find a gap where there's nothing going on. Like it's always going to be there's always going to be clashes. The only problem is. Like you just should have planned this out a little bit earlier, right? And that's on Valve, and that uh, I don't know who. Well, this who is else the thing, did. right? Let, let's look at it this way for a second. Valve have determined the major windows now, so right. now nobody can. And then they've didn't they determine as well the RMR windows? Because I had the RMR dates in my calendar before that they publicly. Yeah, announced loosely, them. I think they. Put I think some, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, so I'm not sure if it's hundred percent as the, it was announced, but it was wow. around the dates. Let's have a look, right? Because if the thing is here, and and 
obviously there needs to be conversations, right? There, there needs to be conversations about this. But for example, like with the Blast situation, if Blast and ESL knew, right, because it's uh, Pro League backing onto the RMR, backing onto Blast, right? That's that's the book the the yep. bookends of events we have here that sandwiches the RMR. There's obviously not enough time in the calendar as you're discussing, and this is where we could continue to chase this thing down until the fucking cows come home, right? But in this situation here, we're we're looking back, we're we're sitting here, we're going to ourselves. Are we able to continue to chalk out parts of the year for this? Like, do we now go? Is there qualifiers? You can't schedule here. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, now, what are we doing? Right? Like, um, I, I wonder. I wonder if I, it could have been more careful. I would say, right? And definitely not to have as huge of clashes. But no matter what, someone's going to get fucked here, right? Yeah. Like, whether it's the yeah. NIP situation or not. There's, there's no way around this. And I hate the way I say that because then I'm back in the like I referenced before the defeat. So there has to be a solution here. But there isn't unless we have one big cohesive counter strike circuit. And that's not what we yeah. have. We have different I mean, the, events that mean different things. Yeah, the reason to, the way to address this would be for Valve to just set like actual windows for everything, you know, for every stage of the major from the open qualifiers to the RMR to the major. And so like organizers will just plan around it, right? Like then you know that this is gonna be there in half a year. You know, let's say we're talking about the next major, right? Like maybe qualifier is gonna be in like October or something like that. And we already know that now. And then organizers can plan around that or adjust whatever the schedules they've already made. You know, we with uh, organizers like ESL and Blast who already announced uh, their entire calendar for the year, right? So you can kind of you have more time to address these these things. And I know that from talking behind the scenes, I know that PGL and Blast were trying to work this out for quite a long time before it got announced to figure out how to um, how to make these things work. But obviously, you know that some other clashes pro cropped up as well in the meantime. But we haven't heard anything from Blast, right? So probably what the most likely situation is, especially with this NIP one, is Blast just adjusts something. I mean, yeah. that's, you, it's impossible to do anything else. Like Blast can't ask NIP to not, you know, to not play the RMR so they can play in the showdown. And it's not even NIP because you you would think that they'd also have maybe a heroic or maybe a gambit in the showdown, or they at least want to have those teams in the showdown. And I think those teams are also in that group. Uh, so even if they're not like a blast team and 100% confirmed, they would not be able to play the armor or they could play it from their hotel rooms in the evenings like we had in like 2018. That was a good era of, you know, qualifiers during the night and officials That's right, at yeah. LAN during That's the true. day. That used to be it's a thing. It's less than ideal. Yeah, I don't think Blast is going to want to. I mean, it's not their premier event in the year, but they wouldn't want it to be you know, a side note to another event. So I don't think that's going to happen. And I think Blast just doesn't have an option there in terms of what's going on. And that's why I think that the dates weren't exactly uh, planned perfectly in terms of the RMRs, because I think originally the RMRs were planned as like maybe seven to 10 days as just like one chunk. But then what PGL did is made them con happen consecutively. So that's where they're taking, I think, two weeks or maybe it's, it's around it's two weeks. Right. Is it so two that, weeks? So that's yeah. why it's overlapping a bit. It's okay. like four days per the for April three R Mars and then 24th. two days. Yeah. And then two days for Asia or something like that. So that would be that okay. would be oh, it's, exactly two, it's exactly two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's took taking up more time than I thought it was going to So that's okay. why that's why I Probably, I would say the blast was in in the clear, but then they got another event just put over their event. So, not something to be super happy about. But I mean, this is at least an online event, right? If it was a land, imagine if you already book like all of the hotels and and stuff. I mean, you still need to book the talent, you need to book you know production and all of these things. So it's a big hassle to move this. Not just like ah, oh, we have everyone ready because you use a lot of outsourced people or semi freelance people that need to do other things in their lives. So it's moving just like three days, uh, not a very simple thing to do. So yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think there's a solution to it, perf like a perfect solution. I think the best thing is to actually have the RMR dates being also very clearly defined and advanced. And and then with the open qualifiers, these are always going to depend on kind of the region and what's going on there. You can't just throw throw them and say like, oh, everything's going to happen in the same week. I don't think that's really necessary because different regions have different kind of things going on. Maybe, you know, in Oceania, they don't play Pro League, but they have their own tournament. That's a qualifier for Pro League. That is more important than the North American Pro League happening during those dates, let's say. You know, so you need to you need to kind of understand each region to some yeah. degree to to kind of have good qualifiers.
Yeah, okay. So that that's where it becomes a whole different thing. And then, then I think after this all kind of boils down, uh, some people on either side, a TO, a team, whatever, some people are just going to have to take their lumps because you, you yeah. literally can't keep everybody happy, right? So, uh, all right. Do we have anything else we want to... Oh, do we want to get stuck into Valve for the lack of notice on this? Like, This is the thing. We are so in the dark with that that it's like, Oh, the no they should have told us earlier, right? But there you go, that's it. That's the end. Like that's as far as that yeah, conversation right. goes. Like, yeah, I mean, like known, what's the point? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've known when the RMRs were gonna be like like at least weeks ahead of time before they actually got announced. So it's kind of like the the same thing that we kind of go up against with Valve all the time, right? Like it just, just takes long a long time to announce things and then it kind of becomes a little bit too late, you know. I mean there was a different issue with Asia as well, which was that like it came right during their kind of off season or like version of an off season that they have because of the lunar new year um in certain regions i don't want to yeah i don't want to get into too much into like what their holidays are because i don't yeah. actually know what they what they are but from what i was reading from people like impression who were kind of criticizing the the timing of this that's what i got from, from that i mean another criticism was also that um they wanted more than four teams which i understand to be honest because yeah, at the moment it kind of feels incredibly cutthroat because you just get yeah. one team from every region, you know. And obviously the regions aren't the same strength. Like you, you could make an make a case for China to have more spots, for Oceania to have more spots than you know, like a Middle East or maybe the rest of or like some of these the countries around uh, around the rest of Asia region that they kind of like lumped everybody else in, right? So that's like that's definitely something that's more on Valve and their approach to things and how they set up the the RMRs and how many spots there are available. And how many teams are gonna there are gonna be at the uh, at the RMR? Because like if you, were, I think uh, miners were two spots as well, and but they were eight teams, right? For the miners, yeah, yeah, the yeah miners, like, they were eight, eight, team, eight yeah, team yeah, miners. Yeah. Like, but we so, would have we'd have people from everywhere, right? Like Indonesia, Singapore, Mongolia, yeah. China, Japan, Korea. Like, yeah. it was it was yeah. I, yeah, I mean, under the current setup, basically, like only one team from like all of Mongolia and like Southeast Asian uh, Southeast Asian uh, countries. And what else is there that isn't actually doesn't uh, doesn't get lumped into a Middle East and India? There's probably India there, yeah, as well. And then God knows about like the, the East Russia part of the world where like there Great are some too. players there as well. It's just Japan, you know, Korea had a well. lot of a lot of different places that are quite far from each other as well. So Asia is always a bit difficult. So maybe having more spots at the actual minor would uh, would make would make sense you know what's crazy right this is like an adjacent thought but right back in the day when we had wcg and the eswc it's just a quick side note for maybe those not familiar with how those used to run but wcg used to be uh citizenship based nationality based so your team had to be five for the same nationality it was in a bit more of the vein of like the olympics and eswc was uh close to that but they weren't as cutthroat with that uh nationality rule you could have three people of the same nationality and two people of different nationalities right that was how it was done back in the day but those those events are you thinking about it now they were really good for the smaller regions right like the because mm. it, all it would all it would take is i remember how this would work at least back in australia you would need somebody to get the license to run the event Right. And then the person would run the license and they were responsible for getting the sponsors to be able to fund the trip and do all this kind of stuff. It was almost like a franchise, right? right? You would run the so um and that's where local communities could play a really big part. But the problem is we've lost all those events, right? Like we don't have what was the last one we had? It was like a WESG. Was that WESG, like one? yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. And and as much as it was not an event that necessarily wasn't it would be a good yeah, it'd be a good thing to run to be able to help out smaller regions. Anyway, that was a side note. Uh should we we get stuck into any of the other details around this or is, is that, is that no, basically it? No, not really. I guess it, it is up to Valve to do, um, to give more heads up. Like that's the biggest problem. Then you can adjust things a, a lot better. In the end, it was like literally 10 days or two weeks from the announcement to the first open qualifier. That's, that's idiotic. Like, especially because the open qualifiers aren't just for noob teams. Like <laughs> you have like top 20 teams, top 15 teams in the world need to play these open qualifiers. They have schedules set out for like three to six months in advance. And you're uh, announcing the qualifier for the biggest tournament of the year, two weeks in, uh, in advance. It's kind of just not understanding or not giving a fuck about the actual scene and how professional it is in some regards, right? Just quick valve shell here and to shell and just world shell i guess i think maybe another factor that unfortunately just to let them off the hook a little bit even more so is just the state of the globe as well um i know that feels like a bit of a cop out yeah. um, at the moment but maybe still for the next six to 12 months i don't know maybe that's still like a viable excuse 
Um, I mean, not an excuse. Let's just go with reason. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, this in, this has been the issue, like going past the main minor. So it's not not even. I feel like it's kind yeah, of like yeah. involved DNA almost. Yeah. If it, if it was the first time, then I feel like it's a co completely reasonable thing to say. But it's yeah, the track record isn't great. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's jump into skin. You now, Lucas, are you ready? Who's doing the quiz? Uh, you're doing it. Okay. Who's it's, gonna read? It's Katowice. I don't know how to read, so not me, obviously. I can read it. I can do I'll, the whole I'll thing. read it out. It's yeah, less I'll do, I'll well do it. It's, it's much better. Let, right. Let's get some of the people that comment on our articles first. Let's get those guys. They they can't read either. So let's dim the lights here for the for the game show portion. I mean, I want to do it, but I can't because right, I know the, the answers. Let's do it now. I'm getting the monitor tan. All right, I'm ready. Striker. All right. <laughs> Question number one. Who won the four team IEM7 Karavica in 2013? ESC Gaming, NIP, or Virtus Pro? So we already locked man, it in. I didn't have to hesitate about that. This is uh, before NIP, and then uh, that's who VP became. Uh, or uh, Icy Box. That's Pasha and the boys. That's before right. uh, Icy Cuban, Box, and, yeah. Cuban and Lord. Uh, they were still playing. If Did I you have right an list. Icy Box uh, like. How does it come up? What's the, what's the name of it? Just like a transferable a HDD or something like that. that no, that was, no, wasn't that like a cooler or some shit? They also Master. did that. Yeah, I don't know if they ever made it to us, the Icy Box. I just remember from a team name. That's why I referenced it quite genuinely. They're not as a brand. So that's, I don't know, European things. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. one out of one. I'm happy with yeah, that. Pretty, pretty impressive, actually, because I, I wasn't 100% sure. Here we go. All right, which team didn't, didn't make a playoffs appearance at Katowice 2015? Is it my team? Heat Stars, LGB, Penta, your team I'm, as well. <laughs> yeah, but just not an option here. This is probably the hardest question, I think. Uh, LGB made playoffs, I'm pretty sure, and Keed did because that was the first time. Wait, did they make it as Keed? I think they did because I remember I was talking. Yeah. Was so an LGB sure. in, in 2015? 2015 was it uh the bold guy that's a big hint i think oh, from, his... right there the bold guy crims uh yeah wait oh shit hold up a second you get you are giving you giving me a hint an actual an know. actual uh, all right all right i was i was gonna go with penta but I've, I've locked in lgb here and i've got it correct so, so thank you massively <laughs> that, that is to, good that is good that is massively good. To, to prof who saved LG, me right there that, that was the Oh yeah, hold up, guys! I, I didn't do the introduction here. Uh, if you would like to win the skin that may be available here, we only need to go three more correct, and you get the fucking full-on bounty. Type bit skins in chat, and we will draw the winner randomly uh, at the end of the quiz. So you got plenty of time. We still got three questions to go. All right, yeah, cool. LGB were the Norwegian team at the time. With, I think with Ray and even ah, with and Pauli, Rubino, Rubino and Pauli yeah. there, and Rubino and these guys. Yeah, Jacobs, yeah. Zebes maybe at the time. Jacob. Yeah. Okay. Question three. All right. Who was the MVP of IEM Karavica 2017? Device, Flusher, or Zipex? Why is my recent history worse than my ancient history? Yeah, it's because that was that were the glory days. Which and was the one where Fnatic won? Was it 2018 where Fnatic won against FaZe in the best of five reverse swoop? What would it be in 2017? I'm gonna say if I, if you want me to help, I can help with that answering that what you just asked. Yeah, help. It wasn't seven. It wasn't 2017. It was 2018. What you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think that's what I said. But maybe okay. So it's not Flusher. Wait. Fuck. Um. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go with device here because it feels like the most obvious answer. He's reading the room. <laughs> the room isn't being very very helpful. This is a uh, Zipex's only MVP. Oh, it just felt like that. Nah, all right, fine. All right, all right. I'm sorry, everybody at home. I'm sorry. Let's see if we can salvage four out of five here. All right, well, question four already. What was the score at the time? Simple nearly 1v3 ends at Karavica 2019 15 14, 14 14, or 13 13? Ah, I remember the clutch. I, I I know which one it isn't. I mean, it, it wasn't a clutch. I, I remember the almost clutch. <laughs> the, the attempt. Well, you know, X7 had to win the 1v1, right? Which one isn't it, Striker? Well, I'm pretty sure it's not 15-14 because it wasn't, it wasn't deciding. I feel... I, uh... I think it didn't decide the game, so or it, whether it went to overtime or won, you know, whatever. 
I think it was so one 13, of the other 13. ones. Locking in C. I've just I've just gone for it. I've just I've just thrown it in. I've just gone quick. Thirty. That's correct. Nice. Okay. Fifth and final. Okay. Number five. How many majors were held in Katowice? Three, four, or five? 2014, 2015. In 2016, it wasn't. That was Columbus, Cologne. Oh, I'm forgetting in 2016. You're not forgetting any. Oh, okay. There so then two. we're all right. So then we were back again in 2019, Katowice, because the second one in 2019 was Starletter. And so it's three. I'm pretty sure it's three. I'm going with three. Okay. Locked in. Yeah, that's three. All right. Yeah. All right. There's one wrong. All right. Yeah, it was 16, 17, 18, 18, 18 wasn't majors. Stressful there for a minute. Zipex question. I can't even, like, I'm blanking so hard on 2017. I don't know what was happening in 2017. They won over but I can't in the final, that. I'm pretty sure. And yeah, I, think that was the, I think that was the du Dupree clip as well on overpass with the Deagle. That was that. And Zipnex winning like 13 clutches or some shit on the, in the tournament. Yeah, this was also like what the first event that Nico played with FaZe or something like that as well. Or like one of the first and they like, or... went to second place. I remember this. All right, well, we do have to draw was... the winner. Yeah. So I'm going to draw the winner and then we'll get uh, back to that. But the winner is RA1 Tapata, Tapa, Tapatia, Tapata. Tapa, Tapa, I don't know how we would say that, boys, but uh, R A one T A P A I T A. That's who won. Congratulations. Unfortunately, I didn't unlock them all. Lucas, I think, or somebody from Hatred T will be reaching out to you to sort out the skin. All right. What was the trivia that I was rudely interrupting? I don't remember. It was, ah, yeah. First event with Nico, and then they won the next one, which is Star, uh, Star Series. Star Letter, yeah. Star Series season Star three, whatever season three, yeah. So that's kind of where the phase, then the phase SK rivalry in, in 2017 kind of started and stuff like that. Good year. All right, good year. I don't remember it, so it must have been a great year. All right, uh, let's jump forward. We're going to get into uh, a bit of conversation about Katowice. We'll go to an ad break in about 30 minutes' time, guys. Uh, so uh, as we kicked off the show, there's a bit of a sentiment, you know, like it's it's happening, right? Like Katowice, as far as we know, is in a I say collision course. It's probably not a good, uh, but we're not, apparently we're not stopping, right? You I can turn that, on uh, the lights, by the way. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say. It's like a, we're doing a horror movie in here. Uh, but yeah, like at this point, as far as we're aware, Katowice is going to happen in the arena. I don't know what the capacity is. Have they stated what the capacity is? You think? They've, I'd they've kind know. of like, it seems to me like they've kind of skirted around the, the issue. So I feel like it's not going to be full, full. But I imagine they said, Carmack said thousands of fans than me. Okay. Two, so 2,000. Two <laughs> <arena laughs> with thousands of fans. It could so be it's kind of like, thousand. Yeah, I don't know what the exact capacity will be or how many tickets they sold. I'm not actually sure about that. But clearly, it's going to be like, you know, a LAN. I thought I would know. But uh, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, that, that's that's the vibe here is the fact that Katowice is coming back. The last time that we had Katowice on LAN in the Spodek, there was no crowd, right? This is just for everybody, a bit of a history lesson. When COVID kicked off, Katowice was the last event to happen. So now we're going back there, which is, is going to be cool. This is where Na'Vi had their big win against G2 uh 3-0 so they're going to be coming back in now they're obviously not defending champs it was gambit last year uh who who picked it up when we we're in the online portion of, of the year right there but returning to the spur deck right as much as katowice of poland's is is a pretty well-known place in the counter-strike world i suppose now it's just a just a little town in poland right so it, it's good to go back there because of, of all the vibes we've had but like it, it, in in how this is going to go as in a first event back i don't know i don't know what to think like it's not like we're um going to new york or something or any we're going we're going to katowice where it it's probably going to be packed i don't know yeah. i don't know i feel like it's going to be popping off like yeah whatever they sold it's going to be pretty much full 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 i guess they so, love it there they love yeah. it there you've seen the ads and stuff with like the things on the the bus stops and they had the 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 big banners and stuff up there um and it's actually like we've had a lot of good counter strike there for a long time Right. So uh, it's good. Good. It's normally a staple of the year. I don't know. Do we need to get stuck in any other particulars with this or should we uh, maybe the format? I, I can give everybody the format. Now we'll do that when we do the bracket. We'll do that yeah, when we do, we'll do that the bracket. It's just like a big event that that, that is coming back on the calendar is one of these events that people like 
casually follow CS, I always think is a major. And it's like when I talk to my friends, like, ah, oh, is coming. Oh, who's going to win the majors? Like, bro, it's not, it hasn't been a major for like three years. You can chill out. It's, it's, it's okay. But everyone thinks of it as that kind of event because it has happened since 2013, essentially. Okay, 2013 was kind of a small Polish event, but 2014 major, 2015 majors. And that was kind of the years that defined cs almost with with the big events and stuff like that so people always think about it fondly i know a lot of the viewers haven't been around like the new viewers haven't been around for that but but yeah that the vibe continues even with them i feel like yeah 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 it's, it's always been a fun crowd there yeah. enjoyable all right um should we jump in because we're, what we're going to do here guys i have a bracket that we're going to go through later and we're just going to work out who we think is going to win all the matches right and we can talk to the teams a bit more there but we have a couple of key talking points for the event that are let's say more important than the others i guess that's that's probably the best way to put this right and the first piece of news here striker broke just the other day now this is something that we might have recurring a little bit more often rops is going to be missing out due to covid right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems like it seems very fairly likely that he's not even going to make it out uh, at all just because the there's first of all he has like a 10 day quarantine period and even though that ends like during the event it could you know, but they, he still needs a, a negative test, so it could be a little bit difficult for him to come back. So it's entirely likely that they will just come um, play the entire event with JKS, however, however, however far they actually make it, right? Yeah, and uh, obviously the the fact that we were talking about. I don't, actually, I don't know if we were talking about this, but it it has been strange that we we dodged the bullet at uh, at the PGL major and we dodged the yeah. bullet at Blast with nobody oh, yeah. going down. Like, I think we got very, very lucky there. Um, as normal, we're not talking about the state of COVID in the world. Professor Prof's not going to put on his fucking white lab coat and explain to you, you know, the Omicron variant, fucking how it's all got. We're, we're just a couple of idiots who talk about how it affects our world, which is Counter-Strike at the moment here. So um, I, I think that obviously as the year goes on, we, we'll see how all of this trends right here and it might become less of an issue. Who knows? Um, but do, do you can just do, stop talking and just leave, let me to talk? Uh, yeah, no, or, I, I wanted or... to, I wanted to, I just wanted to say, do we think like during this period, like everybody should be seriously considering like having a six? Do we think there's going to be something that becomes super frequent? Cause if this happens like at every event, like a team yeah. goes down. I mean, you definitely need to have someone on call that is going to be, you know, you have to consider this it's as not a real that option. Easy, right? Yeah, but also the thing is, like, you can't you can't take him with you to boot camps because that doesn't make any sense. Like, it, let's say Phase were boot camping when this happened, and for some reason only Rob's caught it. Like, even though Thank they're God. sitting in the room, like ne right next to each other, maybe fist bumping the, each other yeah. like all the time, so it doesn't even make sense to you know take someone else to be there with you during this time because that only increases the chance if one of you gets sick that he's going to get sick too so it's just about maybe expanding your network talking to some people you know saying okay like probably nothing's going to happen but if something happens would you would you be able to do this to just maybe when it happens because it is going to happen maybe not for you but for some team it is going to happen and it's going to happen for at every event for the next six months probably at least one team will have this experience that you just have someone that kind of makes sense for your team to to call right so I it's mean, not a complete no name joining the team yeah i mean a lot of the time like some of these teams have academies right so yeah like, that's that's, a, that's an obvious help. place to go for a team like mouse or like fanatic or you know like a lot of these scots and even have an academy now you know some of these teams that actually could obviously with some it's going to be more difficult with than with other others because they have their actual academy team somewhere you know south america or whatever it is for godsend then uh but still like a lot of these teams have actually like extended lineups to kind of like pick out of yeah. obviously not with everybody but i think like a lot of them will not have that many that many problems like finding just somebody you know who would be willing to come to Karavica to play like because like it's an event that anybody wants to play right I don't think it's that big of an issue to be honest like just needing like a set six because a lot of the time you're just going to have like a, a talent a pool of you know free agents who are just willing to to come to an event yeah, yeah I, but yeah, yeah I think but, what is what is important to actually think about as well uh, maybe today today uh, obviously for I am Katowice whoever is sick will not be able to play at least from the tournament area maybe for the group stage you can play from the hotel room uh and then if you go to the playoffs then you have to have people that are clear because you have to play from the stage 
because of obvious reasons like you can't be backstage and maybe you can hear the crowd because there's no like noise canceling whatever yeah. stuff like this so it doesn't make sense i think uh, even for the group stage dude like i think we have to we have to draw a line right like people yeah. people at home don't like seeing it in the bedrooms so if you don't see it in the bedrooms that means everybody's going to mingle and that means with the restrictions that some of these companies have in place there's going to be testing people might get sick and that's just the yeah. way it is right like i get yeah i, I guess they're I don't know what the deal is for Katowice. Is it going to be like a tournament area? I pres presume it's going to be some sort of a tur tournament area and then like rooms if needed. I don't know if you know I more. think it'll be like IEM Winter, right? You know how IEM Winter, uh, I, I know you guys don't know where they were playing from exactly, but it looked like a studio, uh, not like a studio environment, but the classic environment. And yeah. it's the it's the banners behind them with just the five sets of PCs. And this is what ESL used to do super, super good, right? This was one of the things ESL when we were just doing mad event seasons and constantly popping around the world was their entire thing was we would go to a place for a week and for the first four or five days, well, normally six or seven when you consider all the setup time uh, of that period before the the finals and the playoffs and the arena kicks out, they would rent out a whole hotel and then they would get conference rooms and they'd set everything up in conference rooms. And obviously yeah. you boys would be at there at those events, right? Yeah. And that's what they used to do so well. That's what became a bit of a specialty. And then they were moving away for, from that, right? It seemed like they were going into trying to do stuff in more set venues and not in hotels. And now because of COVID, it's actually worked out better to do it back in hotels because everybody can yeah. be in their hotel room and stay within the, the hotel confines, right? So, um, but I think we still need to get them out of their bedrooms, like it's out of their hotel rooms. Like, yeah. I think in general, the restrictions from, from what I saw, the protocols and stuff like that, the restrictions for Karavica are going to be much, much less strict than we saw at Cologne or Winter where they were trying to set up some sort of a bubble. You know, maybe it wasn't perfect, but, you know, the players weren't really allowed to to leave the floor and stuff like that. Only were allowed to leave for, you know, very limited amounts of time to go outside for like 40 minutes a day or whatever oh, yeah, it was. The yard time. Yeah. So now now they're actually well. pretty much allowed to do whatever they want. They just have to be kind of careful. You know, they've, they've been advised to do. To... This, this, just on that, though, because I, I assume I have similar restrictions to the players, right? Like going I would in assume there. it's the same, yeah. So for me, they, they want me to do a PCR test, right? I did the PCR right. test today. So that's just to be able to get in the area to, to do the media and stuff. That's why I have to do a PCR yep. test. And so like, Previously, when I would go, like I'd have to do a PCR test before traveling, and then I would have to do a PCR test when I get there, and then I'd have to do like a short quarantine period until that came back where I didn't mingle with anybody, right? But the, right. I, I'm surprised that like I'm still having to get like tested, to be honest, like in the sense that you can travel right now. I can go get on an airplane without an antigen test or a PCR test because I have my vaccine certificate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be to be fair, but from like to go from the the length that they went to at like winter and stuff like that to this, I think is still very, very mild. Yeah, <laughs> because like comparatively, like you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can, you can you need to get tested like before the event and maybe once throughout or whatever it is. We'll see what happens. Exactly. Yeah. But like it seems it seems very, very mild and yeah. like reasonable, you know, from, from a human perspective. I don't want to go into the whole discussion, but I think it's uh, it's interesting what is happening in some countries, well, let's say Denmark, for example, that are essentially just treating COVID as the well, flu. Right? I'm sorry, I'm not gonna don't want to trigger anyone, uh, but that is essentially what they're saying. So if that's the case, then in the future, like how do we deal with that? Especially because different countries do it differently. So you know, if you go to Poland, you have to abide by Polish protocols, and then you go somewhere. It's like what is what is going to be universally accepted by all of the players from all of the different countries? Like someone might be lax, but someone might be more careful, and then it's like th this isn't okay with me. That is going to be a very spicy and sticky topic to kind of navigate and figure out how we want to do this. Like in six months. Or, you know, or, or I have six months, I guess, for the next major, what, what is going to be, what are the rules going to be? Does everyone need to be vaccinated? Well, Big discussion. That's what they Twitter said, right? There was a whole thing yeah. on Reddit about this, right? That is that is still what PGL said for the for the major. Everyone needs to be vaccinated for do players right. and talent and everything. But, and here's the thing, right? We either, because this is, we're, we're talking about something that's very politically charged right now. And I'm sorry to our younger viewers for bringing what your parents fucking talk about into this, but the the fact is like however 
however the science develops there we go uh <laughs> is gonna is gonna determine probably how those rules are enforced or not enforced right like it, we'll, we've got to wait and see with that kind of stuff yeah. and I also think where tournaments are held and stuff like that's obviously gonna drive a lot of this like imagine if there's a tournament in denmark you know next month or something like let's say pro league is in denmark like would we actually see us on care at all and just like let people not get tested and whatever and and just deal with it as any other sickness you know if you feel symptoms just stay away that's pretty much uh, like the deal that they are they're doing there so i wonder how tournament organizers are gonna are gonna deal is, with that you know going from country to country this is the thing though right like everybody should be doing everything they do in in their own life as a, an adult at their own risk right like everything you do to like crossing the road to deciding True. what piece of fucking fruit you want to put in your mouth like at some point like i don't know if the onus will always need to be on the event organizer right like it's it's one of these things where some of them like this is kind of at the moment the pr is going to be super bad if something yes. happens so that's why they have to do it but who knows what's going to happen in six months that's yes, that's exactly. that's that's just gonna, that's what's going to dictate everything uh, unfortunately no one cares about your lives they just care about the pr all right that's let's how it is and that's true all right and with that let's fuck this off and let's continue forward yeah. here. so rops is not going to be there which really sucks because rops with the team at blast looked great and i was really excited to see phase play now, uh, yeah, lots of people massive... joking, right? Calling me delusional JKS fan, right? They're, they're, they're saying I went there and I got robbed sick. Now, I, I would love to have seen this kid play on this team because I think this was a great opportunity. We were just talking last week, striker, that they could strike pretty early, you know, with this team and having yeah. decent results, or at least they should. Yeah, I mean, it's a massive kick in the dick for FaZe for sure because they actually looked decent, even though, like, wasn't particularly convincing at Blast Groups. But, you know, there was there were good signs. You know, Ross was actually the the kind of a star that we were expecting him to be. And, you know, he fit into the system and everything kind of went well, you know. Obviously, you know, some stumbling blocks, they had that, like, big comeback from Vitality happen to them and stuff. So it's not like they were perfect, but, you know, there were signs that this was going to be a competitive team moving forward, you know, contending for titles. at a, Even at Karavita, you know, they were the team that we expected to do well from the start because of how good this fit looked. So that's kind of like the... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's it's it's a massive kick in the dick for for them to just have to feels like fuck. Does this happen to face like every time, time something major happens to them? All like the time. they'd go through a major roster change or whatever, or just like get their new lineup and, and like Olaf decides to go go away, you know, and then like he's brought back six months later. Then he decides not to play again in a couple of months. Like it feels like every time we have reason to be positive about phase, something goes wrong, you know. So it's it feels like another one of those situations. Yeah, let's hope this doesn't become like it was like exist into Chrome and into a Dren. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, like a, let's let's oh hope it doesn't God. become one of those situations again here and hope that Rops is like, well, he will be ready and raring to go by Pro League, right? That's yeah, most that's, likely that's the expectation. I, I hope he's better to get through and be able to play the event, but they have a stand in temporarily. And obviously we've as we've alluded, we've spoken about here, JKS is the is the stand in here, which actually worked out all right now. Um, I want to give some people some context because a lot of people probably have no idea like how this would even come about, right? So here's like personal anecdote time. Um, so when I found out and I heard about this ROPS thing, like I messaged Justin pretty much straight away, right? Now, Justin, JKS, I, I, I'm friends with him, you know? You he can played, call him Justin. played a couple majors name, with him, you know? I can call him by his first name. Now, um, he has been staying in Europe, uh, in, Cop in Denmark specifically, uh, since he was benched in complexity right um now he's gone through this off season with different offers coming through the door you know i don't know what happened behind the door as to why some of these or none of them obviously came to fruition um but he's been staying in europe with the intention of continuing to play right but uh as we are now in mid of february right that was starting to wind up and he was looking to go back to australia uh in a couple of days really um He's been like living in hotels the whole time. Like he hasn't been home. Uh, I think it's like for a year and a half, maybe two years, something like that. Like he, he hasn't been able to go home because of all the COVID stuff. So it's kind of just left him in limbo. Um, and then over this holiday period, he hasn't had access to a PC. So uh, he's been off the computer for like a month and a half, two months, right? Um, so I messaged him as soon as I saw this news and I was like, Justin, you, you're probably getting a call up, mate. Um, and he's like, nah, there's no way. They'll just ask Olaf, right? And then eventually, long story short, it turned out he was there. And I was I was bigging him up. I was like, look, mate, this is going to be great. It's a good team environment. You're going to go you go play with Carrigan. Twist is going to be awesome. You you know, you used to play lots of Rops' positions. It'll just be fun. Just go have some fun. And basically, for Justin in like a 10-hour turnaround from the moment they like asked him, 
he was doing something with you know something personal over there in Denmark. He ba- packed all that up, went straight back to Copenhagen, went straight into this Astralis facility they have in the last couple of days he's been playing. So he's probably going to be going in with five or six days practice at most, right, of being off. So expectations, you know, probably not very high. But if he had been playing the full time, this could have been a great opportunity for him. Now it's just going to be, uh, let's let's see how he does. No, just like that, let's let's not damage my reputation anymore than it, that I already have, right? Yeah. So, so we'll we'll see how this goes. But really, like on paper, like without the context I've just given, it would be pretty exciting to see him play. Like it would fit, right? It would make sense. Um, and I just, you know, hope, hopefully you can have some fun with it. That's, that's I mean, all. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, one week isn't even that bad. Like it could have been a lot worse in terms of like how last minute this was. So for, for him to get a week to get back into the group of things and actually play with the team for, I imagine he's actually practicing with the team uh, now. Phase, I don't think FaZe have had PCs for the last couple of days. Okay. Really? But I, I've been yesterday. No, it has PCs. Yesterday, PCs the day before, this yesterday the day before, I was playing face games with Justin so that like he had someone to play with so that he could warm up. That's, oh, that's, that's probably about what I, okay. I sat there and I, uh, I had a ROPS demo run on my laptop and I shadow played it and then uploaded it so he could watch it on his laptop or on his phone when he <laughs> doesn't have access to a PC. Um, so it's been like fucking trying to throw this shit together last minute yeah. and hope that okay it's th- that's weird because I was in Warsaw and where they were and basically like my interview got cancelled with Rops like 20 minutes before it was supposed to happen because he had just tested positive so I, I guess I got a dodge the bullet um, anyway that's but they were there and I expected them to be there until they travel to Karavica so that's kind of surprising to hear yeah Justin's um, not going just for full on the story he's not going to fly in until tomorrow he's flying in tomorrow morning right so right. he's had he had three full days on a PC, and then he has the next couple of days before the okay. tournament kicks off. To be honest, yeah, might be terrible. might be a quarantining thing for the phase guys as well. I don't know. I don't know what. I'm not going to speculate too much I don't, there. I don't think so because well, when we were there, it seemed like they were just none of them. Like all of them Rob's got just wrote, again. Rob just wrote they went to Katowice four days early because of my infection. In case they uh, get it, they can play from the rooms. Okay, yeah. oh, that okay. makes sense That's... because there's a test positive in. Warsaw, right? That was Warsaw. Yeah, they have to quarantine. They have they to quarantine. To Warsaw there. can't can't play. Yeah, hmm. makes okay. sense. All right. Well, but that just sucks because that, that, that was obviously last minute. There was nothing ready for them, right? Yeah. Okay, that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. Well. All yeah, right. shit happens, I guess. But it's I, like it's bit considering the circumstances, not that terrible. Definitely puts a damper on phase expectations after the blast, and you just it's just kind of a write-off tournament. You can't really expect anything. Like well, if they do well. If they scrape by and make playoffs, and then Rops comes back for, for the playoffs, then maybe something could happen. But it's just kind of we'll we'll just write it off if it's not good and move on. That's the thing, right? Like, uh, well, I'm I'm gonna tr- I'm just gonna think positive thoughts. I'm gonna think JKS plays, they get through to the playoffs, or until the point Rops can come back. Rops comes back, Rops joins the server. Phase of fucking sick. That's like best case scenario. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my fingers and toes crossed. For Worst that. case scenario: lose to Sprout, play against Godsent, lose to Godsent, eliminated on day one. Yeah, goodbye. That is the worst case. But most importantly, everyone in chat has sent it to him now. But hopefully, Rops is feeling all right. And uh, if he isn't, hopefully, he get better soon. And we want to see you back in the server ASAP. All right, uh, let's jump forward here uh, in the play-ins. Right. So those people who maybe aren't too familiar here, let me throw Lucas a little bit of a link. We'll go through a bracket later in Google Sheets. Uh, but just for right now, we need to just uh, take a look at the bracket over all so you can see the teams in the play-ins. Now, scroll down, Lucas, to uh, where we've got all the names. NIP, Astralis, FaZe, Entropic, Big, OG, Godsent, Fnatic, Copenhagen Flames, Sprout, Ent, Complexity, uh, Whistler, Krakow, Maus, MIBR, and Renegades. Now, uh, we had Sprout standing in for Ty Lu as they were already unable to make it. So we've had one team drop out before the event was able to kick off. But this is an interesting smattering of names here, Prof, don't you think? Like it's it's yeah. a bit of an odd bunch. There's a couple that you're like, okay, yeah, we can get excited about. There's a couple like, oh, I don't, I don't really know what to think. Yeah, I don't know. I think when you look at the rankings, I think it's, yeah, it's NIP, Astralis, FaZe are the top three. Now FaZe playing with a stand-in, Astralis playing awful. And then NIP also... It's not a stand-in anymore, almost, uh, Fuzi. Or is yeah, it Fuzi? Or is it Jaquinho? Or is it Device maybe coming back? Yeah, oh, I don't know. know. Whatever it is, it's still not going to be super exciting in terms of that team, right? It's not, even if it is Device, which we don't think it is, they're not going to be full they force. They would have announced it, surely. They yeah. Device is and back, we would have had a big PR thing. Yeah, but it, but it's probably not, right? But whoever it is, it's not It's not going to be, you know, full, full force team. And then you look at it, it's like, Actually, the teams like Entropic, 
OG, even Ants are teams that I feel I could do really well. And then the, there's a lot of these teams where I, which I don't really know what to expect from, like even Fnatic. They had that nice, really, really nice run when Smuha joined. Now recently haven't been that hot. Complexity only got their first win now, I think, against uh, Order. Copenhagen Flames dipped off after the major. I Sprout is someone that's on a on a, like an up, upward trajectory, so maybe that can be interesting. And then Big also, like even for Big, Searson also has that injury, so that which is preventing him from playing too much and practicing the team from practicing too much. So that's also an, a kind of a factor there. So it's it's really up in the air. I can see like almost from these sixteen teams, like fourteen could go through. Almost not fourteen, maybe like twelve. Yeah. No, I, I see what you're saying right there. Like I I think that this field is going to be difficult. Like it looks like maybe it should be more clear cut than it is. Um, striker, are we even with these issues? Are we expecting NIP, Astralis, and Phase? I know they're all in different boats here, but are we expecting them still to qualify with with those issues? Or do you think what Prof's painting here that maybe some of those names don't actually go as far as they should? They might lose to a to an MIBR, or they might lose to to a Whistler Krakow. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about going as far fetched as that. To be honest, I think NIP have been showing decent results considering their circumstances. So I think they should still be considered one of the favorites to go through. Um, and it's not like they have a super difficult second round as well. If you look at who's at the, on the other side, which is Copenhagen Flames and Fnatic, we so, can run through the bracket a bit later because I yeah, actually okay, have it. That we'll, it'll, it'll actually simulate it all for us as sure. we go through it. Yeah, so but I, I mean, to... I would still yeah. So just to round it up, I would still consider them one of the favorites to go through. Like it's. There's, they've shown enough, uh, especially recently at Blast, uh, for me to believe that they are a decent team. You know, they're not going to be among the underdogs just because they don't have device now. All right. Well, what if we did it like this? These are three like household names that you'd be people would be expecting to see in the next stage of the tournament in the main group. But if you were to rank them, they all have issues right now. This is for both you boys. What order would you put the team that has like the best chance, like from one, two, three? You were talking three. about the NIPS Ross phase, right? Yeah, because they're three teams you'd expect to make it through to a group stage, right? To from the play in, but they all have their own issues. So, which one of the three do you think is operating at a higher percentage, or could be? Uh, I'd say take a stab in the dark here. Obviously. Nip, nip, then phase, but very closely. Very I'd close. say they still still are kind of I'd say safe picks, and then Astralis, but like a long way behind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm in a similar I, I boat. With that. Yeah, I'm actually. I would actually almost even consider phase. It depends. Depends on JKS really. Like, I don't know what kind of ex what to expect from him. If he's at a decent enough level, I think. Like, why? How is this team any different from when they had Olaf? You know, in terms of like firepower. You know, it's not going to be. Yeah. It's obviously not going to be terrible for them. They they made it make it made it work with Olaf. So I don't see why they wouldn't with JKS, who does fit in a lot of the same positions. So obviously, you know, this isn't going to be up to like all the strats and all of that, but. Uh, he's going to be decent enough fit for 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 the team, like as good as you could hope for, honestly. So I'd almost put Phase first, just based on that, and then close second and IP, and then third Astralis as well. Yeah, yeah, that's good logic. I fuck with that logic. I was thinking like a similar thing, right? Like, shame they couldn't get Olaf back in terms of like just being able to plug him in and do exactly. But he apparently, he was going to New York or something, right? So that was in a tweet that it, that he he made or a tweet I read on Reddit. I don't fucking know. I read something, um, but uh, yeah, okay. Let's go into uh, the next little dot point we have here. And then once we get through this, we can go into this bracket I'm talking about. Mouse Sports, we haven't seen them play, but they've been boot camping as well. Striker, you ended up going over there. He, saw, you... he saw them play. Physically, he saw them play. Yeah, I oh. physically saw them in a room. Were okay. they Were they good? Uh, I didn't actually see like how they when they played, so I can't really say uh, anything about the game because I didn't actually watch any of them. Back. So Dude, that's, no that's scream the gossip. I mean, I did talk to NBK briefly, um, and he seemed pretty confident. Um, okay. So, I mean, we're we're gonna have to see about how it we actually don't know translates. What the measuring stick is right. Yeah, that's the thing. Like exactly, like what's the expectations for them? But, like confident about what exactly? Like that uh, they're just not gonna bomb out, or yeah, it's 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 a bit difficult to gauge this team, right? Because we just don't know. Like the yeah, yeah like you say, the measuring stick is. Just different compared to what uh, to what we expected. But from expectations are low. I think that would be fair. I yeah. think the, uh, like, do you guys think expectations for Mouse are low? Like, I do not. In my mind, Mouse Sports, and this is without even going through the temp bracket yet. I think that they would be a team that I would not like. They would be. They would be my. If I had a basket that's definitely not making it, they would be in the next basket along. Yeah. Right? They're like they're they're on that cusp of definitely not making it for me. 
So I, my expectations are low. And the thing is, I think there's definitely good players here. Like monesty has been good for G2, right? Well, if Torzi can be good for Maus, then we're looking at an upgrade here of Frozen. Uh, sorry, an upgrade of Acor. Uh, but Frozen needs somebody else in the team to be able to rifle and, and, and help him out with that, lo that load, right? So do we get more out of BMS now? What are we expecting from MBK? We haven't seen him play in some time. There's a lot of questions around Maus Sports as well. Um, so not a team that I'm... I don't even know if I'm excited to see them play. Like, I don't know, I, so there's nothing, I, I, I don't know, how, I, other than Frozen, I'm, it's hard to get excited. I mean, I'm for Dorsey, for yeah, Dorsey, definitely. And the CFB must is in form again, like that, that's kind of the hope because we didn't really see them play a lot last year. Were they at IM Winter? I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, they I were. think they were, but yeah. they were super dead at that point anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, may maybe those two things combined with Frozen, I'd say I'm interested. And an NPK as well. Like you can't, how, how can you not be, do you, do you hate the baguettes? Are you not an NBK stand like the rest of us here? No, like I think I missed this whole thing. Like there seems to be different portions where I think I must have been playing as well. And I miss like how everything was framed when I was watching at home because I guess I wasn't watching it at home. I, I missed a lot of that. I, I don't have the like the French love because in the French era, I was getting fisted by the Tech 9. So definitely didn't love it. Like <laughs> it was like, you know, so it's, uh, it, it's, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like I just, I, I want a reason to be excited. Maybe they'll give me a reason to be excited when we see yeah. them play. Um, all right, the next little bucket of teams we've got here in Tropic Fanatic uh, Ents, uh, something to prove. Now, I am uh, actually excited about Ents. I think the roster move of Madden for me in terms of like roles as the type of player Dota was was a bit quizzical, right? But I think that it, Madden in terms of a player and, and some of the games that I see snappy call and how quick it can be, and now they, it feels like they've just got another like mauler type of a rifler, right? Ready to get in there and, and crack open some bomb sites. I'm actually kind of excited to see what type of CS Ents are playing. Like, I, I don't even know if it's snappy. It's going to be yes. mad. Let's just say that. And that's no pun intended, by the way. It's, it's going to be crazy. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that like we were maybe lacking a little bit from Hades, right? But people need to remember he's still pretty fresh, right? I think that like Dha is probably one of the ones in the team who's probably the most bedded into this alongside of Snappy. Spinks is still pretty new too. Um, and Dodo was also pretty new because he came into Ents and ended up being the last Finn there uh, until until he's just been dropped now. So I, I, I think this team is an interesting mix of players. And Madden, for those who don't remember, at IEM Winter Snappy actually had the vid uh and madden flew in and he played True. played one map for them uh he was spending <laughs> it for snappy and then snappy made it and then he, that was it for him but so he's already he's already had time in an ents jersey so i don't know this one for me i i, I don't know if people are sleeping on it but ents obviously not a necessarily a household name so maybe not as many people are as excited for this roster as as yeah. could be uh, am it's i a little be, bit it's yeah? a little bit difficult i know we're gonna we're gonna get into the bracket later but they are in a kind of a rough spot to okay. to go through if you look at the who they have like in the in two matches around them which is then yeah. tropic the first one and then og who have also looked good and, and potentially the second one you know obviously you know you know when they drop down to the lower bracket there's going to be some more names introduced into that but you know not the easiest route let, let's do Boom. this let's, let me link the bracket and we'll start going through the matchups now yeah, we can talk about the teams as we go and then we'll get to the uh the teams waiting later down the track now lucas i'm going to be sending you a little bit of a link here mate uh it's just there now it's a spreadsheet so it's not the most beautiful thing in the world to look at everybody i was trying to do up on the challenge bracket earlier so that i could do it in a nice little fun uh way for everybody to watch sorry to all our audio only listeners i'll do the best at describing while i remember um but yeah this is just a bit of a spreadsheet and uh i got this from uh mr slavinsky he gave me a template to use so i now uh, now i can give you a template looked, of how looked the too good works. for you too. i was like what the fuck like how many I had how to much copy time it. did you I put had to into copy this it, mate and i had to put it on my own google drive so to be honest, uh, that that can also be very difficult some some even even the simplest tasks is sometimes be so complicated especially for a human being like me okay so can everybody can you can we see that everybody I think we can. Yeah, we can see that. Okay, cool. Yep. So uh, for everybody at home who are playing uh, on the audio only editions, uh, the uh, the teams are seated. I'll actually read them out in order of how they were seated for you. NIP number one, Astralis number two, OG number three. Uh, I'm having a dart my eyes. Base clan number five, four, Godson number five. Yep. Entropic. I'll just read. Uh, by Entropic, uh, Big Fanatic, then... Opening Flames. Yes. Take it, take it away. Complexity. 
uh, ants, mouse. Yeah, so hard to read. Yeah, it is. Then the Renegades, away. MIBR, and Whistler. I think that's the last three are pretty accurate. The last three yeah. are pretty accurate, right? That's that's kind of what you'd be expecting there. Sprout coming at yeah thirteenth in the mix here. So I, that's the seeds for everybody. The opening game, uh, or in, in the bracket we have here is NIP versus uh, Whistler. Now uh, on this matchup here, guys, I think it's a best of one. Uh, is this the type of matchup that uh, NIP struggle with? Is this the type of matchup they're going to get through? What what are we thinking here? Let's let's do this. There's three of us. Sorry, Lucas. So we can we can do a bit of a vote around the table here. Hey, I can join in as well. No, but then you ruin it because you'll become the fourth. And there's, if there's yeah. three of us, I mean, you always, I mean, you disagree. know, I'm biased as well. Well, if somehow, one, if somehow chat's uh, raging out, we can include you in this. Now, Whistler Krakow, for those people not familiar, it's Serbo, Goofy, Snatchy, uh, Jed, QR, and Spiro. Now, that name's been around for a very long time. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, they're the Polish representatives at uh, Katowice here. Now, look, they've been doing decently. They were yeah, just outside 31. the top 30. Yeah, yeah, they had some good, decent results, but it is it isn't the best one. Upset possible, definitely a possible upset. Um, but yeah, I think you go for NIP. I think it's like you can't expect it even closely to expect an NIP loss here. Doctor, anything to add? Um, not really. I think NIP have been pretty good at not losing like to really big underdogs and stuff like that. I think that's that happens Look at very this, rarely though. to them. You guys like that? You guys like that? You fucking like that? Look at the production value on this show. The this production value on this show, you guys have never seen anything like it. And this is why we are becoming pay to pay to view. Pay -per -view. Yeah. Make sure you sub because <laughs> pay to view is coming soon. All right. Can we stop saying that because people people take it ser seriously? Yeah. We'll Maybe if they take it seriously, then we were like, I uh, might as well do it anyway. Boys, I was going through. I can't read it on air. I'll send it to you after the show. I was going through my uh my HLTV DM, someone sent me the most, I'm going to paste it for you guys in chat. You can, you can read it. Not you guys at home in chat, you guys in, in, in team speak in chat. That's what a guy in, in one of my HLTV, uh, inbox messages. Anyway, well, you guys read that. Uh, we got the second matchup here. Copenhagen okay. Flames oh my God. Fanatic. Okay. Fanatic. Yeah, that's not broadcastable. Yeah. It's a bit over the top, isn't it? Um, anyway, so Copenhagen Flames versus Fnatic. Uh, that's Take eight, it away, boys. Seeds, Take seeds, it away. He's nine. Um, this one here, you outlined it earlier, Prof. We have woes from the Fnatic camp of maybe them uh, not having as smooth sailing as, as as we saw from them initially. And the same for Copenhagen Flames, right? The the initial signs were good, and then now we have, have a few more worries, right? So Copenhagen Flames versus Fnatic, where, where, where's your money lie if you were a betting man, which you're not? Wait, this is me or a prof? Either of you. I said prof. Okay. But he's he's I doing really like, he's, to prof. He's, I so washed I my hands from this one. Okay. I my hands. You don't want to talk about Fnatic versus Cobain and Flames? Mm, I just, I don't know what, what to think about it. I'm I, looking at Fnatic's latest results. They played one game against Apex. That's it. It's like, it's kind of a coin flip match for me. I don't yeah. see I don't see what I would judge this uh, game on. I have no idea what what to even make it the difference about. I wonder if we get Copenhagen Flames back are a bit more hyped because like the thing is this is it feels like a bit of a cop out here but when they did well it was at, at the major like a big event right and then the stuff that they've been doing has been back in the weeds of uh the the tier 2s and stuff that they've been struggling with within the online realm so I, I wonder if this is that or if they just ha did have that Cinderella run, right? If you were to still go one for one with experience, Fnatic have more, right? Yeah. So yeah. that that's in terms of like individuals, if we were to go player for player, if we were to start like, then I don't know, then I have no idea. Then yeah, definitely just rolls and dice, flip a coin. But if we yeah, look at like let's... tangibles, maybe I would be looking to Fnatic. Let's let's say that if Fnatic don't make the main event, then that would be very more disappointing than if Copenhagen Flames don't do it. Uh, and getting the first win would be a good step towards that goal, right? In the end, it doesn't matter if they lose Copenhagen Flames in a best of one and then win two best of threes and get through. But but I think we have to have higher expectations from Fnatic overall, despite Copenhagen Flames' major run and all of that. Like Prims, Alex, Muya, Brola, and Messi. Like this should be a pretty good team. This should yeah. be main main event team yeah i i, I think that like Copenhagen flame showed us something good but they haven't really showed us something good since right so i i i'm gonna just 
relegate them unfortunately to the Cinderella mm. run storyline for now until they get have a heartbeat again. So I, I would vote for Fnatic here as well. Striker, yeah, do you have same. a rebuttal? All right. Cool. Uh, no, I think in general, I think Fnatic have struggled like against better opposition if you want to compare like their runs as of recently. Like Copenhagen Flames have some like weird losses in in their past results. There's like the the, the French mix Akimbo. Hello. Akimbo. We actually Keeps. get a fourth we actually get a fourth window. Lucas didn't like that. He popped in, um, he gave us the thumbs so, down, and he popped out. They're not out of the event yet, Lucas. Calm down. No. What look, Lucas, what we say here doesn't actually matter. It's not like we decide who goes through or who doesn't go through, you know? But if we did, we'd be picking up. I mean, fanatic. you didn't believe in them. <laughs> you you didn't believe in them at the major. And uh, I'm just sure. saying, don't underestimate yeah. them now, you know. But if you can Land give here's Hagen the thing, games. I'll give you a challenge. I'll give you a challenge. If you have something tangible, like if you have a piece of information that can uh, explain why that their results online since the major have been subpar and what's going to be different now then we can have a conversation about it the problem is if you can't provide that and you go out on whimsy and you say Zyphon's going to run around he's going to fucking headshot everybody and nick does is going to be flicking around with the awp on over i can't quantify that so do you have any information that you know from the danish whispers lucas that we can maybe change our mind on here do you want to try and sell us i'm sorry that information is insider information. I cannot say anything. Goodbye. Okay. Well, I can't. I, I I'm not a religious man, so I can't just go in on faith here and trust you to go for Copenhagen Flames. I so mean, the, that there, the things about Copenhagen Flames is obviously the complexity move that didn't happen, which potentially didn't happen because of one player and and an agent that asked for too much money. Potentially, maybe oh, that I happened. Heard this one, I like the sound then, of this story. Who asked for too that much money? If if that happened, then that would Name probably. Names leave leave like a bitter taste in in some other players that didn't ask for too much like more money uh, and then also didn't get that transfer right that could be a thing i don't know okay wow so maybe maybe that's uh but but i don't see how that would be would time heals all wounds so maybe that is now you know forgotten and now they're playing but you know I the, the result that was the rot that was the final reason anyway yeah but still in counter strike because, days yeah. of our lives it's still a it's still a pressure point at the end of the yeah, at the end of the day, there's also the ESL kind of bonus thing for NA teams, which I think that also helped complexity pick pick an NA team. And this is something that was kind of talked about, but not really explained too much. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's essentially, essentially there are some monetary incentives now for Louvre agreement teams to pick up NA NA rosters. So that that also might be a thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to talk about them again soon because they have to play another game, both these teams. Uh, Godsent versus Mouse. Now, this is one where we might have a little bit of a discussion to be had. Now, uh, Mouse Sports, like I said, I don't have any any faith. So like going in in a matchup like this, for me, immediately, it's a 50-50 because it doesn't even matter who's on the other side, right? It's a 50-50 immediately there. But the thing with Godsent is they're a team who's in a similar boat. You know, they had like a showing where it's like, okay, yeah, right. They can see some parts here of this team that look relatively exciting. Uh, they're, they're doing that story. They're bringing things back together from from um, the Brazilian CS with a couple of younger players from different teams. We, we all know that story. But have they been doing anything hugely impressive? Well, same situation. Like, I I, I can't... I don't know. Striker, you want to kick us off with this one here? Who, uh, who you were you... talking about Godson just now? Godsent versus Mouse. Like, I right. have a hard time uh, finding anything with this team either because, like, for example, with Godsent, one of their quirks is the fact that they don't even really have a primary orb, but everybody orb. Yeah. So it's like... Even in terms of looking at the identity of how they pr approach the game, it leaves us in a position of, uh, I don't know, lots of unknowns. That's If you yeah. don't have a primary AWP, you're playing Counter-Strike in a pretty unknown fashion, right? Yeah, I mean, I think from the last time we saw Godsend, I have more faith in them than I do in this new Mouse roster, just based on, you know, I've actually seen them play and they've actually had some decent results. You know, they had that win against Big and before that against Heroic at Tiam Winter. Um, and so, and they even had like a close map against Virtus Pro. You know, this team is actually like dangerous. You know, so I think I would put more faith in them at the moment until I see Mouse play. So I actually would put them through. Oh, okay. Well, Pro, that was I, two, to, two to none. Are you going to be the one, or are you I, gonna... I can I can agree with that. It's just yeah, I can agree with that. Even though Godson didn't play anything in two months almost as well. Uh, since I am winter, but they finished 56 there and they have, have something to go on. I mean, there has to be an upset, right? So I guess on paper, this would still be considered an upset. That No. Well, not by the rankings, but by people seeing Mouse Sports and Godsend versus each other. Yeah, but that that's like not a very expert opinion. No, that's definitely. probably your, fan. That that's probably your friends who ask if Katowice is still a major. 
Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Those people will be like, oh, what the fuck? NBK lost to uh, Talk was on the other side, two time major winner. There you so, go. You know, Maybe they can make it work. I'll kind of, I'll kind of balance there. 50 50, as you said. All right. Well, uh, I guess we're going to edge this one across to the Brazilians. And this is obviously because we, we want to keep the Brazilian fans happy. So uh, they'll be happy with this one. Uh, Sprout versus FaZe. Now, even with the issue of JKS, uh, do we think that they're going to topple Sprout, who have made some interesting additions? We covered this during all of our roster mania stuff. And two of the names on this team, most people at home aren't too familiar with, right? But has anybody been keeping tabs on Sprout? Are they they to be concerned about? Barry's coaching, right? Barry... He's, he's been in game leading for a, a long time, old mate. Do we yeah, think that Sprout are interesting? For some reason, I feel like this is going to be the upset. I feel like this is going to be the one upset. Do you actually, think so? Sprout did. The, oh, actually, they they beat FaZe at Flashpoint, if you remember. Oh. That. So there's it was a very different there. Sprout. Completely different lineup. But, but still, there is I, history there. I like the changes that they made at Sprout, right? Like, because obviously they they lost Favum, and then they had to make like I like that when Rouse came in. For people who aren't familiar with Rouse, like he played at the first major, right, and then he kind of disappeared, and then he he was over there with Bird from Sky for a little while. And now he's in Sprout, and they they've made these uh, additions, so the team's no longer German. We've talked about that before, but I don't know. Like I've watched there, so there's no, there's not a real like objective reason, but I don't know. I just feel like th this is probably because of that historical match, and that's like in the subconscious back in my mind somewhere. You know, Sprout beating beating Phase, eliminating them early from the RMR. So I guess maybe that's the reason. But this is my you know gut feeling about an upset for with no facts to, to back it up. I think we fall into the same boat here as a bit of a problem because when we look at Sprout, right, we can we can sit here, we can theory craft how they could upset this team but we've already seen phase as as you pointed out before striker like get it across the line with the four players they have in the server now regardless of the fifth right like that's not saying Olaf doesn't contribute anything to the team but he wasn't one of like the big fraggers for them consistently right you yeah. would get that out of brokey and twists and then rain or carrigan would chip in when they need it so it's like it's too hard to go against brokey and twists regardless of the the jks factor right so like even though I agree, if and the and the map pool as well, right? I sit there and I think I think about the positions Rops plays, and then I go, okay, are they going to be super super like in a close game, but one or two rounds from a position where you're being when you're lurking or you need to get a timing or whatever on the CT side when you're an anchor, that one or two rounds maybe, but it's not going to be the factor of like if Brokey with the AWP isn't able to take any space, that seems like a massive problem, right? Like th there's there's differences in things, so I don't know. I think they should still be able to get it done with the parts that they have. Um, but I also you, think you, that like if you want to replace a player, I think as much as it's an important role, I think if you're an anchor, you can play it so that you're not the the key to everything. You know, especially you know, in liability. Of, yeah, exactly. And you you can kind of like stay passive and play like the ultra ultra like lurky role. You know, that uh, you can still play that these days. And you don't really need to take a lot of initiative, especially on the T side. And then CT side, you're just going to slot in somewhere. Like it's not going to be that difficult, I think, as long as you know you have some talks with your like side partner about like you know these are the plays that we can make, and that's like a much simpler side to figure out than than it is on on T side. So I think I think this is a team that should beat a big underdog even with a stand in. Like yeah, this. yeah. I I I kind of I ha I feel like there's something in the water just for the best of one factor here, but I think it's, this one's still too hard to go against the logic. So we happy to put Phase in here. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Oh, this has been pretty vanilla so far. OG, uh, Renegades, that's... All right. yeah, do we, we think agree. that's going to be... Renegades, all right, nice. Next one. Okay. Uh, no. Also, uh, history of upset there. So they haven't announced it yet, but I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that uh, for Renegades, it's Leah standing in, right? They haven't announced that yet. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure. It's literally the most boring thing yeah, ever. But... Literally, there's some guy on the forum like called username Gay for Alice there amazing username replying to my to something saying like oh Leaz is gonna play i'm very certain I'm like bro who isn't like everyone is expecting this to happen it's just like announce it. it's not even something that anyone wants to leak because it's so obvious it's like report tomorrow there will be sun and this would actually be shocking and not true in denmark but like in most countries it, it would happen right so uh, please just do it what what is the what is the delay yeah, I, I think that maybe it's something organizational. I don't know. Who knows? But either way, with Liaz standing in, um, does that make the team significantly better than where it was? I don't know. We haven't seen Liaz be the type of player he could have been. He never really 
fell into that, whether that he was in the shadow of Jake Harrison, never could perform. Maybe he had just constantly shit roles on the Renegades days, but regardless, like never really became that player. So let's see if he could do that. That is is one key right there. I think in's Alistair, right? You've got some good pieces on Renegades. I just don't think that they could be OG, especially not with OG who are going to disrespect the fuck out of them. I, I, yeah. I have a pretty good feeling from the way that they played the Blast event that they're going to go in with that same type of swagger. And I don't know if they're going to have issues closing games, which is something maybe that the, the old OG would have had. This team's going to come out and just fucking aim map. And that's one thing that have Renegades had enough time in Europe where they're up to point to par in terms of the aim. Like Flames is going to fuck them up, I reckon. So um, for me, this one seems pretty clear cut. I'd go like a 80-20 yeah. in favor of, uh, of OG. Every, yep. Anyone got anything they want to add in this matchup? No. No, I mean as much as as much as I'm kind of like, I got sold, but by what Maui said last time when he was talking about OG being the, what did he say exactly, like the least, like the Convincing. most likely to bomb, even after like how how well they did at the, at the boss groups, I think still, this is, this should be a pretty it'd be a massive bomb, right? It'd be yeah. like a bit, a real quick way to go down. All right, big complexity. I'm gonna throw you this one here, Prof. Set the scene for this one. Did you, didn't you just get Anson Tropics? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Anson Tropics. Set the scene for this one. Anson Tropics. This is going to be a banger game, especially in a best of one. I feel like like both teams have lineups where everyone can do something and like there is action from almost every player. Like th there is no one on the team that's like a Sanji that just chills back and does nothing. Like even I think Blackie is probably the like the statistically worst player on Entropic, but even he has some like amazing games from time to time. And I don't know how Heinz is going to play as a team. And Tropic as a team always play this kind of aggressive style as well, but more like a team aggressive style. I, th I think they're actually similar to, to some degree in how they play. So I, I think that this is going to be a actually absolutely banger of a game. So, but where do I actually pull it? I think, I think a Tropic need to get the nod just historically on their track record recently as the favorites overall, but it could be a very open game. This one, yeah. they're all pretty hard to call, right? Strike. This is another one that falls into that, but maybe because these are two fringe teams, right? These are two teams who could definitely make it through the top eight. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, well, I definitely like, like out of you know, historically, hundred percent should be entropic, but at the same time, like these best of ones rarely have all favorites going through, and I feel like this is the most likely to go the other way out of all of the other matchups. So I feel like I'd pick ends just based on you know we have to pick one upset at least. Like it feels like. We can't go for all the favorites, you know. This this seems like the one upset that I could see happen. The thing, th this game here, I think one cool thing for Snappy is coming out with a new player. He can have a couple of, I want, I call them gimmicky rounds, like just pocket strats, something that he's been refining or working on that they can pull and just have a couple of quick ones here that could get them up to a nice lead. Um, if they can put them away, right, that's how ends win. I think that that's one way that they can probably call themselves into a really good position against Entropic. The other way that is for Entropic is if that happens, but then they just keep that mental there and they grind back into the game, right? So uh, first game on LAN, new year, uh, maybe some jitters. I, I'm happy to take a curveball here. I, I hate going against our boy Hooch, but uh, I feel like I, I, I'd say ends here. What's, yeah. what's, the, what's the room thinking? I think in general, like I just think there, I can see a world where ends just start rolling and they never stop. You know, there's just entropy don't really have an answer like consistently. You know, that they just snappy just keeps calling these fast strats and entropy are just always on the back foot. Uh, and that's how that's kind of like how I see this game potentially playing out. You know, fans just get the first three rounds or whatever and then just call something quick in the fourth one, they get rolling quickly. And you know, this is kind of this is the best of one, so that can definitely just spiral out of control really fast. Did we go on ends? I mean, I can, I can go with that. I can go with that. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Not ten. One and a zero. Uh, big versus complexity striker. You want to set the scene for this one? They already played recently, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how that went. Uh, I actually don't remember the game at all. Um, I think they played recently, didn't they? Play at boss. Yeah, they did. Big one, sixteen ten. Yeah, just did big played so much at that event that this is like the match that I completely like deleted out of my mind. Yeah, that's. Uh, I that's really don't remember enough. at all what happened in, the, in in the game itself, but it seemed seemed reasonably one sided. Ten five CT half uh, on Nuke um, into relatively easy closing after like you know pissed around loss. So it seems like uh, historically matchup wise also goes in the favor of of big. Generally, like complexity just haven't shown much so far, right? So. I just haven't don't have a lot of faith in them. Like the only 
time they they won is against order which is obviously you know another team that doesn't really have experience against the tier one a lot so not a lot of faith in complexity at the moment even though i like the team and they're winning right now against heat they're actually playing okay. right now in uh, the esl challenger event uh, number 48 i believe it is they won vertigo which was heat's pick 1916 and right now they're currently playing on ancient which was complexity's pick and they're winning on the t side eight to five nice. so they could actually 2-0 heat here or at least they're having a competitive series which is the best sign of life i think we've seen from them so far like in the other yep. games there were moments there were rounds there were patches but Heat's one of these teams that has been like slowly making waves as they move up the, the rankings, right? So I think Big are probably just going to have them in terms of depth and they play European Counter-Strike. Like I, I see, I, I think the complexity could beat Big, but I don't think they will. And that's even with the Sirison issue, right? Like sirison has been playing some of the best Counter-Strike he's been playing since 2020 this year, hasn't he? True, true, but not online. So, well, that's I mean. another factor. If you just say it. If he doesn't play it like right now, Prof's going to call him an onliner. Sirison is better online. I mean, that's Statistically just true. The numbers back it. So we'll see if if uh, Maui's uh, Maui's theory that he went into a slump when Lance came back, and that's just like correlation, but not causation, right? Yeah, it wasn't uh, a source of each other. It just like happened at the same time. Just coincidence. Okay. We'll see if that if that holds up uh, this event. Well, do we think uh, that they're, they're going to get upset by complexity here? No, I wouldn't. I don't think complexity has it. Has the, oh, but this is actually, that's like a big one. Like big 1-0, definitely. Okay. Sure. But then we have the most, <laughs> the toughest match to call. <laughs> and oh, yeah. the Astralis. It is actually pretty hard to call. That's that's what you are for me. What? Sorry? Uh, no, I just see Prof constantly like just. Oh yeah, that's his. Your, your cam is just. Uh, I don't know what's going. On. I have some packet loss or something. Right? Oh, okay, yeah, it's that, entertaining. That's what it is. It's good. It's good to see. We. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a. Hadrial TV confirmed. If we don't have tech issues, so, so yep. some slight tech issues is all right. I think here the thing with this series is that MIBR performed better than we thought they should have. Right already. Like, uh, even if you took away the Navi result, right, it's still pretty good for what we were considering which was not a lot but they shouldn't beat astralis if they beat astralis astralis are in like crisis zone already yeah. like a loss here is gonna probably break this astralis and that seems like really crazy to say but it's been a while blame f and config joined on the 4th of november i do believe so Look, maybe it hasn't been as long. I guess they've probably got another couple of months, but I feel like a loss like this it would hurt them a lot because they seem like they always have such high expectations of themselves, Striker. You notice like last time like how yeah. like emo glaive looked on the of the of the blast cams after? Like that was pretty fucking rough. I don't know. Like do, do you think like the pressure could actually hurt Astralis in a best of one game like this? Like it seems weird to say. Yeah, I mean they're they they can be in a great mental state at the moment. That's pretty obvious from uh not just their results, but also how they look in game and from all the changes that they've gone through in the last couple of months or on the opening and stuff like that. They're just so unstable that I don't really know what to expect from them as a as a whole as, at this event. At the same time, like they've already beaten MIBR once. It's not like it was a difficult game for them either. So it's uh, I would still pick Astralis over them. But overall, like hard to have faith in Astralis at the moment, even in, in games like this. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm still feeling happy to go on the safer side of these things here. Yeah. This is where we would be expecting to get like Config playing a good level on land, right? Last time he played land, he played fucking fantastic. Well, actually, no. I am winter. Never mind. I, I, can, I, can, I forget about that event, right? It was so like, it was just a tail end of the year event. It was like a party event, right? Uh, without yeah. being at a party. So, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, definitely upset potential here. My cam is still dying. I'll try to fix it. After don't worry this. about it, Matt. But, uh, yeah, I agree completely. Like, if if they lose this, then that's like red alert, essentially for for them. Good game uh, too. Yeah, really good. I like number two was the one that I played a lot, and even later on, Hamachi did you use it like to play like later on online, but no, virtual I, land. No, that was really no, that was really no, nice. Didn't get into that. Um, all right, the trial is still. Yeah. Still, let's whack it in. Let's whack it in. Let's keep yeah, it I mean, rolling there's along no, here, there's boys. There's no good reason to pick up my BR, you know? All right. Okay, uh, they took down Navi. That's the only thing going for them. 
I think one of the keys here, guys, is with these matchups, right? Like you guys can see how this would work at home. Um, but it, with this is we're just kind of flirting with how a bracket could come out. So the winner's bracket matches and these matches here are best of threes. Whoever would win these in our theoretical bracket or hypothetical bracket uh, would then qualify immediately for the next stage. NIP Fnatic, Godsent Phase, OG Ants, Big Astralis, right? So some really good matchups there to see who gets through. Um, if a big, realistically, they have a run where they should get through, right? Or at least they should, they have a pretty good chance to get through. Uh, you could say same for OG Ents. Like they're in, well, actually, Ents is pretty hard. We were talking about this before. Uh, lower bracket matches. Uh, we don't need to talk about who's going to win the upper bracket matches. I don't think that because it doesn't, oh, no, it, it will. Uh, we got Whistler versus Copenhagen and Flames. We got Mounds versus Sprout, Renegades versus Entropic, and Complexity versus MIBR. So let's speed through some of these here, shall we? Yeah. Uh, wait, you have guys. to scroll down a little bit. I know. But I actually have to uh, ruin the party a bit here. Run some ads. We have we'll to run some ads. The extra fire M42 RGB. What a fun mouse with five colorways, lightweight frame, and just 59 grams with a swappable backplate to suit your grip style. The sensor, the easy cord, the smooth skates, and driverless control for RGB and DPI is why you should check out the M42 RGB down below. These bombs go to the teammates. Parry match. Your esports teammate. teammate. Buy and sell your skins now. Easy, fast, and safe. The best skin site. Credit card deposits and withdrawals. Instant cash out methods. Get the best deals. Quick, simple, reliable. Bitskins.com. I'm actually using the uh, wireless extra five mouse right now. It's, yeah. it's very pretty. It's quite light. I like this here at the back. The light, the RGB? Yeah. yeah. Really nice. Yeah, Did you, you swap know. the the ass on it to make no, it like higher? I have it. Well, the thicker. thing is, uh, the, I don't normally like ambidextrous mice. I normally, no, I mean, I don't like ergonomic mice traditionally. I'm, a, I'm more of a fan of uh, ambidextrous. Okay. So, uh, for me, this it feels quite weird in my hand, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, okay. Where were we? Striker's back. Whizzler versus Copenhagen Flame. Striker, who's winning? Go. Um, flames. Bang. It's in. Mouse sprout. Ooh. I mean, if they can't beat phase in a best of one, they won't beat mouse. I'm going for mouse. What? How is that? How is that logic? That's the logic. How is that logic? I have I no would, time to explain. I could back sprout here. And I feel like a mouse hater. I guess I like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I just don't see anything there. I'm going to, I would vote for sprout. So strike, you got the deciding vote here. Mm, I'll go with Sprout. Oh, Prof. Proud to be Sprout. Outvoted here. I mean, I'm the original sp Sprouter, so I'm fine with that. But You're the original seed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Entropic Renegades. Uh, yeah, Entropic. That's a big one for, yeah, rough part of the bracket there for, for Renegades, definitely. Like, yeah. all of these teams look pretty, pretty solid. Complexity MIBR. I, I would go Complexity here. I only yeah. just. Mm. Yeah, they yeah. didn't lose last time they played. Black City. Yeah. They played uh, in Blast as well. Look, it's it, I, I don't know. I, I just it just Let, feels yeah. let's edge it to complexity. Let's all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I mean I don't mind picking complexity here to be honest. Okay. We, we do need to do these winner games. Now NIP versus Fnatic. Now I wanna say Fnatic, but I feel like NIP always just seem to beat teams like this. Yeah. Like NIP are just better than they're supposed to be. I don't understand why exactly, but they're they just aren't a bad team, you know. Not like they're supposed to be a bad team, but they're not supposed to be as good as they are, I think, at the moment. So I'd probably pick that IP as well. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, yeah. I'm gonna go NIP. Prof. Uh, yeah, I agree. Okay, sorry, Smuya. Uh, Gods and Phase, same situation. Like I feel like if Phase with a standing can take care of Sprout, I feel like they can probably take care of Godsen. Yeah, I'm behind like, that. I'm trying to use the logic, right? I'm trying to trying to recycle the logic here. OGN. It's working perfectly. I feel uh, this could be this will be a really good game of Counter. Yeah, right? yeah, it could be interesting. Like this could be a really action packed game of CS with what we've seen from like Nexer, and if he brings that kind of brawly assault in with the way that Snappy likes to that play, could be sometimes crappy as fuck. Yeah, that could be really fun. That could be a really fun game to watch. Um, I'll. Do, I, this is one where, like, I want to ride the Ents fairy tale. Yeah, like, I, I want to ride the Ents fairy tale here. Yeah, 
possible. It's, it's quite clear. Like I've got a hard on for ends and like mouse. They're just not doing it for me. Like I'm, I don't know why. And I have no reason to be like, I'm, I don't know what's exciting me. Like for mouse, I don't even know what type of counter strike they're going to play for ends. I know that at least they can shoot people in the heads. Right. So it's like, I don't know. That's where I'm at on this. Do I have any, any votes coming in for either team here? I'd go for OG, honestly. Stryker deciding vote. No, I want to go for Ents. I know this oh is like the second God. dubstep that I went for, but I want to go for Ents for some wow. reason. Wow. Stryker not backing me at all. Holy nope. shit. It is obvious that Stryker hates Prof. Reddit thread. Let's go. <laughs> Holy moly. All right. Uh, big Astralis. I, big. Was gonna, I want to say Astralis. I want to say Big. Uh, the problem is like, I... The problem is it depends a lot on Searson. It just has to, right? Like, he's he's such a key player for them. And the problem is, like, if he's, like, doing okay, as I mean, if he's doing as well as he is online, you know, and obviously that's uh, that's a discussion. Um, but also, like, if you're injured and you're probably not going to be super up to traveling and stuff like that, you're just going to be even more fatigued than you're supposed to be and stuff because of the injury and because of all the recovery. So I feel like they're not going to be in a great level uh, just because of that. And same with Cersei. So... Like I'm on the fence at the moment because I just don't have any faith in Astralis, but I'm I'm gonna go with Astralis. Astralis. Yeah. You changed your mind. Yeah, I changed my mind. You just told yourself out of it. The thing is, that I I think Saracen's just not gonna be up to par. Even like I'm putting all the line talk aside, like whether he's actually good online or not. I think he's like the injury could really affect in what kind of a level he's gonna come in, and and like the travel and and you know having to deal with something like that. Uh, in combination, it might be pretty difficult. Oh dear, Prof, you've got fuck three times here. This he even is absolutely I, fucking incredible. This I filled out the form this wrong is a as joke. well. That is Am I, I joke. constantly deciding shit? Like, can I go in first a lot next of time these? Or? Yeah, you, yeah. Well, I tried to give. Yeah, I tried to like balance it out a bit there. But I the can't last couple, even, like the guy. So the guy has surgery, plays the next day or in the next two days, then plays even better the next week, and then. The, Two weeks after that, he's gonna be worse. Striker logic, but, right? But there. like he's gonna I fucking don't want travel. To hear anything. I rest my case. He's <laughs> gonna go on a fucking plane and has to like deal with all this shit. And like you know how travel can be some can be tiring as it is already. And if you put an injury on top of that, that where you're not supposed to sit for longer than like a few hours at a time, like this is not something that you just like brush off and you know and, gonna, and just like play as gonna, well as you're supposed to. He's gonna to. go by boat. He's gonna sleep <laughs> in a in a nice bed while he's traveling to Katowice. So it's gonna be easy. Well, we're now a little bracket right here. That means NIP, FaZe, Ents, and Astralis would be through to join the uh, eight teams who are currently waiting. We'll get to into them in a second. And then the lower bracket games are Big Covenant of Flames, OG Sprout, Godson Entropic, and Fnatic Complexity. So out of these matches here, let's go through them as well. There we go. Keto, we don't fly. There we go. Either they're going to drive. A train or a car. Even Doesn't if you matter. go by car, you're still at a few hours in a car if you're traveling. You just lie driving. down in a car. You can lie down in a car. Fair enough. Easy. Uh, okay, big Copenhagen Flames here, Strike. You can go first on this one, mate. So you don't have to be the <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Now you said Keto in the chat. He's going to hate me. No, no, no. I actually want to pick big in this one. Rob? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Even, even though Copenhagen need Flames are probably more dangerous than Astralis right now. I don't need a vote. That's all good. All right. Uh, <laughs> o OG, OG Sprout. I'm going to go with OG. Striker. Yeah, I can so, agree. There we go. Yep. OG. Everyone in. Uh, Godson and Tropic. And Tropic. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say Entropic. And Fnatic Complexity. Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic. 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 That's, Fnatic. that's pretty has obvious to, be to me even, yeah. All right, well, that's our bracket there for the play-ins, everybody. That's how uh, it will be looking. Now, I don't have a bracket because I don't know how the teams are going to be seated. We can't come and make one for the next stage, but we can use the event page on HLTV to illustrate that the teams who are waiting for them. Now, the play-in stage... Let me quickly summarize this. Here you go, Lucas. Bring this one up for everybody at home. Katowice now takes place uh, in three in separate Poland. stages. Yeah, in Poland too. The first stage is the play-in stage where we have 16 teams. The opening rounds is a best of one and then all the remaining matches in that bracket are best of threes. Uh, you win two and you're through. You lose two and you're out, right? It's it, it's pretty straightforward, right? You can, you can really easily understand how that format is going to work. Those eight teams will then go to join, scroll down for us, Lucas, here to where it shows all the team names, to go join the likes of Na'Vi, Gambit, Vitality, G2, Virtus Pro, Heroic, Furia, and Liquid in, um, well, a very similar kind of situation. This would be broken up into two groups. 
Uh, you can see the groups here. We got Vitality, Heroic, Virtus Pro, and Gambit in Group A. And in Group B, we have Navi, Furia, Liquid, and G2. And every matchup in the group stage is it's a best, best of three. three. So there's no more best of ones. Uh, same situation here. If you win two, uh, the initial two games, uh, and you play in the upper final, you are already through to the quarterfinals minimum, and you are contending for a semifinal spot. So uh, if there was one flaw with this uh, format, that would be it for me. I think you can you get into to that far in the tournament very, very quickly. Um, but uh, yeah, that's how the, the format will run down. Then there's a couple day break. And then on the following weekend, uh, we get the playoff days with the quarterfinals, the semifinals and the best of five grand final. Uh, okay, so out of all of this, I guess we just say, are there any names in group A or group B who we do not think will make it out of their respective group? Now, obviously we don't know who's going to be in the group with them, but is there any of these names that you're worried about? That's open, open um, slammer. Heroic. Worried about heroic? Yep, okay. 100%. Why? I just think uh, last after week, everybody, yeah, exactly. I've, I've talked about this a couple of, like in the last two weeks, even. I think heroic being the only one who kind of, st- well, apart from Gambit, obviously, being the only team pretty much who stayed the same, didn't really make upgrades um, or compared to the teams around them. Um, I think they're going to struggle in this competition. Okay, like to to not like to, to bottom out like a two O type thing, or you think they're gonna like at least win a couple no, matches? No, I mean they could, they, could be, or... they could be somewhere like the lower semis or something. I think they're just not gonna make it out of the group. Well, that's I think they're gonna be everybody. they're gonna be competitive. Like I'm not gonna say that they're just suddenly gonna be shit, you know. But like with how they looked at the end of last year and with how everybody else has made upgrades, I just think they're they're gonna miss out. We will get a test pretty early, right? Because if they win their opener and Vitality does as well, then we get to see. Because one of the things I have issues with at the moment is comparing all the Blast matches against one another. Um, we know that Na'Vi wasn't in their best form, and we went over last week of why they could, right? They didn't have to be in their best form last week to achieve the goal of the group stage. They still managed to do that. I haven't seen the likes of these new rosters, the Vitalities of the world, the G2s of the world, going up against the already established names. So Vitality, this group for them is, is probably going to be a little bit rougher right because heroic vp and gambit have been together for longer periods of time right if these do tend being longer matches and they're grinding them out obviously the experience the vitality players and having zyro on the team is fucking great but then maybe is there enough in the playbook have they done enough theory right like how far are they going to get pushed here and i think they're in a good good group to get that measured um but yeah heroic i guess the thing is it, it it was wasn't it Cadian like lacking finding impact on the AWP that started to become a bit of a distinguishing factor for Heroic? Yeah. So if Cadian's found himself again and is able to, to find that impact, then I think that Heroic can continue good form. I see why you might be worried a little bit. Like I don't have any worry for VP and Gambit, but I say that only three teams in this group are going to be able to make it out. And I, I would like to see VP, Gambit, and probably Vitality all in the playoffs, honestly. Yeah. So Heroic kind of just miss out by virtue of not of being in this group. Whereas on the other side, like if let's say Liquid was in this group and Heroic was on the other side, I think then maybe Heroic out of Navi, G2. Um, I think and if Heroic, Heroic are in, in the other group, they have chance, yeah. Yeah. So that's a little bit unfortunate for them. They're probably in, it's hard to say what the stronger of the two groups is because you got Navi and G2 in group B, right? Who are obviously two, two of the big dogs. But in the other group, like VP Gambit, Vitality, like that's also, well, and Heroic, it's, it's fucking scary either way here. See, I don't know. Seems I'd say like if you're on liquid in one group, that makes it easier, essentially. Yeah. Um just so because you have phase, eight to four get, games. Yeah. Probably phase end up in that group if they get ROPs back. That could be pretty good for them. Yep. Yeah. Especially uh, yeah, I mean uh, could be could be a good one. And I mean, even some of these other themes, entropic ends, you know, these teams could be pretty dangerous. Maybe not to go through to the through the whole group, but at least pick up one or two wins in the in the best of three stages and you know that essentially just eliminates you from the tournament uh all right well i'm trying to think is there anything we want to get stuck in with this boys or should we should we just because uh, uh, we're going to do another well we're going to try and do another show i don't know if we're going to get one in before the playoffs but that's like, the plan at least i don't know what more we can say these teams are good these teams are a little bit rocky like we've touched on all the main storylines yeah, we can't go through the bracket because we don't know which four teams are going to meet them here. But for the I, big, for the big teams, maybe there's a top top five teams in the world are here. Yeah, is there are there any like storylines or expectations that we're kind of keeping eye of? Like, oh, is there a team that needs to do well? Does Navi need to win this? Uh, that's maybe the the first one. Like, is it necessary for Navi to to win this tournament to you know 
continue that era talk and all this it i think to continue the era the era talk yeah because like if they lose this and then they lose pro league which will be concluded in yeah. like five weeks after this event concludes then yeah like then it's then we're back in a very competitive era assuming they're diff they lose to different opponents or we don't know who's who's going to win those events i think um it's important for the navi era conversation for them to win here i think I'm also keeping my finger on the pulse of like Gambit as well. Like I want to see them make it to another playoffs and see them continue to mature and what can become more of this team. Um, I think for VP's progression as well, right? Because those teams need to continue to incrementally trend up. They all like they, they, they can't start going down, right? Because they're all looking to be the best team in the world. So those kind of names need to almost immediately continue pick up where they left off or do better. Whereas Vitality G2. Uh, as we go into these, some of these that have had more drastic roster changes, if they don't perform up to expectations, their fans are going to be upset, or their irrational ones, but it's really just a blip on the radar for where they will probably end up, right? So there's less expectation and pressure from that standpoint, um, whereas for these other names, if they start getting toppled by a lot of newer rosters, you start going, okay, well, now you, go to, you, you quickly scuttle down the world rankings, right? So for me... Uh, I, mainly the the established teams. For the new teams, I'm just excited to see how they match up. Like, which like, I, a lot of the new names, I couldn't go into this event and say, "Yeah, G2 should win this event" because I'm not a fucking lunatic. Like, you know, I, I yeah. don't know. I, that's that's my main storylines. Anyone got anything else? Um, yeah, there's somebody we haven't. There's nobody we haven't actually seen out of these T-Bell. We haven't You're, seen Roeg yeah. played so far, right? Oh, we, we saw, saw them. They, they bombed out of what was the first fun spark? No, no, it was like a pinnacle cop or something. Yeah, but how much stock can we put into that? You have to take into account also, like two of them actually got COVID then. Yeah. So that that was also a factor. So I All don't right, know. Fuck it. Have you done your fantasy team, Prof? Uh, no. Okay. Can we do it? Has anyone? Has, have you done one, Striker? No. Okay. Well, I'll post mine then, and we can do one here as a group as well. Uh, so. I think maybe I could, oh, I don't know if I can share my screen. Lucas, show everybody this. I haven't assigned any roles to them just yet. I think the roles would be kind of straightforward. I'll assign some roles. Of course, you have to guess. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, come on now, man. Can't, I, I just, I just pugged with him for a couple of days. You know, I, I, I'm pretty, I'm on that. How's he, how's he looking? Um, yeah, like pretty sharp, all things considered. Like, yeah. like I, I don't know what, where to put the marker, right? Like, I think it's one of these things. I was trying to explain to, to him and obviously it sounds so stupid me explaining anything to a top 20 player in the world um but i was saying to like and i always used to get this when i would have like little breaks right they weren't like extended breaks but you'd come back and you'd have like fresh eyes and things would just seem pretty crisp right um you obviously you're better off having a, like 120 hours and being like a fucking robot like rops right but sometimes when you come back you get that like because the theory it's in your head especially for cerebral players right they understand it's just about the aim that's sometimes missing so I don't know. I'm on copium, fucking huffing that shit like no tomorrow. Um, but we'll see. So there's there's my fantasy, everybody. Uh, I think OG are going to do well, and I think that FaZe could do well. Um, and then I'm hoping to get the ROPS trade back in if they make it to the playoffs. So that that's going to you know really spike me up there. But and no, then... but they're the separate uh, games, so it doesn't matter. Ah, oh, fuck. The the plane is one You're right, and then the groups are another, and then the playoff is a third one. So. Oh, I think I made a team for the group stage as well already. I did. Here we go. Here's the team I made. Critique this one, Prof. Okay. Bring this one up for everybody at home. I mean, this there is... are going to be more teams to, to be oh, added. I know, I know. But, but this is, I went with what was available. This is fucking insane because Nitra is like game-breaking almost. He's like 136,000 or yeah. so it's like super, super, super cheap. And this is uh this is a pretty pretty it's decent one. looking solid, yeah. Thank you. I don't know I how much Misuta cost you. Maybe you know between Misuta and Apex, there's something that you can find. Maybe some from some uh like a smaller team. When you know the whole bracket, when the, the play-in finishes, maybe you can make some adjustments. You can edit the lineup still, but like the bit simple combination is pretty pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. I mean the potential like. This is this has like sky high potential in terms of you know Apex has been kind of banging out obviously not necessarily expected to do to keep being at this level but like Misura obviously has his peaks as well like it's there's there's a lot of potential for this team to to get to get a lot of points. All right, well uh, we were talking about whether we were going to do a fantasy team or not, but we're almost at the two hour point. I got a fish yeah. pack in my bag. Tomorrow's going to be a lovely long travel day. So 
I think maybe we can just uh, start winding down the show. We got playtime and the power match matchmaker and yeah. final thoughts and stuff. Yeah. Should we get Let's into do that? that? Let's All do right. that. Let's go to playtime. All right, welcome back, and we're going to get into the Power Match Matchmaker. Uh, this time round, Prof, is it you, the curator, again? Always. All right, o- well, this Almost time, always. This time round, uh, the, well, the options we have in the left-hand column is uh, Symbol Plus Zywu not top two. I assume this is things that are going to happen uh, in time periods, guys, because on the yes. right-hand side, uh, it's a soon TM this year, next year, 2037 or never. And uh, the options, Simple Plus Zywu, not top two. Nico wins major. NIP stable lineup. ESIT report part two. Striker wins his bet. No COVID issues or no major clashes. All right. Uh, well, I guess we could start with the Simple Zywu one. Um, well, obviously, it can't be never. 2037. I feel like this one, like... Maybe- I can see next year. Yeah, maybe next year. Or maybe, like, it's so early in this year, like, anything could happen. Like, if Nico continues his form, he could definitely be challenged for a top yeah. two spot, right? Lucas, did you say something? Yeah, give me uh, give me just uh, 10 seconds. Are we still live, Lucas? Yeah, 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 we're still live, of course. Okay, well, I just heard it. Eh. And I, you know, I wanted to make sure I investigated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, like, profit uh, cameras, shit, it's over. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. But here, Sometimes here. I look like the Grinch. Here. I added the... Uh... 2020... Oh, yeah, okay. 2027. Yeah. yeah, I'd go with 2027. I think in 2027, they probably won't be top two. That's fair. Yeah. Striker is for next year. Striker, you think... I said, next, I said I can see next year, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, we Those can look with that. Two good options. Yeah. Definitely. I don't think it's happening this year. I think I put a poll on Twitter asking the same question. And it was like 65% people thinking that this year... Simple as I would be top two, essentially, or 70%, something like that, which I think is kind of the expectation. That's kind of reasonable, reasonable ratio, right? Probably there. going to get closer, though, right? Like, we're going to be, the, it, 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 we could see this race kind of heating up, I think. Well, hopefully. Yeah. I but it's the... now, but it's now been three years in a row that they've, they've been the top two players, which is very, very interesting. Just like a duopoly at top between the two of them. All right. What about Nico winning a major prop? I feel like it's it's almost like a now or never situation. Maybe not. I don't think this one. I don't think the next one. They should be favorites to win. Okay. But I think in the next next three, year, next three should be that should be the time. So, so I'd, next I'd go for next year. Yeah. Draco. Yeah. How do you feel? Um. I'm oh. gonna say never. I'm gonna say next year as well. Just on the basis of. I think at the moment, like we're maybe looking at Monesi peaking, like, you know, maybe late into the year once he gets like fully acclimated, you know, and peaking. just like not, not like peaking in terms of like what his like absolute potential is, but this maybe peaking was the wrong word to say. No, I mean, in general, it's just like, you know, getting, so, getting himself acclimated to the tier one and, and starting to show his true potential, you know? Okay. And I think that means going into next year, they're going to be like major winning lineup, you know? Okay. All right. Uh, NIP stable lineup. I'm gonna go soon. TM because Ooh, one optimistic. One, one, I think one or two things will happen. It eventually they'll just go. Well, this we're fed up with this fucking bullshit. Like we got to put a close to this chapter right here, right? Or someone will leave, and then the team will just have some changes, and then eventually just become stable by nature, right? Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna believe that the players saying that they don't like this publicly. Well. I don't know. Did Plopsky say that in that many words? I'm pretty sure he said that he didn't. Yeah, I mean, even Campus six months ago said that they changed too many players. So yeah, well, I I think that they they probably have to, right? I'd, it it's optimistic, but I I'm kind of hoping for the players because they're good kids, man. Like I, I like I like chatting to Hampus and Plopsky and those boys there. So I hope for for their sake that they're able to to get a stable lineup. But I'm being optimistic. Does anybody have a real thought here? I think never, never, never. <laughs> based on their history, but it feels like they're never going to have a stable lineup. I don't know. Um, Six months without a change. That's all we need, right? Six months. Yeah. I mean, it's not looking like it's not looking like that's going to happen at least anytime soon. So, well, that's the thing. But if those next year, six months straight, like, is that a stable roster? 
I suppose. I guess but it's at the same time, not if, not, not if, not if he's, yeah, not if, if he's temporarily kind of stable. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Not if he's constantly being portrayed as this, like, maybe, you know, like, yeah. I don't see Getting that as a stable along. lineup. Never string anybody along, guys. If if you you know if you're out there being a bit of a fuck boy, right? It's always better to be honest with the people because it's going to save you a lot of dramas in the future, right? I know it seems like fun to play the field, but these are human beings, and I want you guys to consider them when you're making your selfish fucking choices. Uh, all right, um, where are we at here? Easy okay. report part two, uh, twenty thirty seven. I'm gonna go with never, and I'm almost feel sincere when I say that. Okay. I just feel like there's way too much stuff for them to cover off. Like they've they've basically just gone up to a beehive and they've just shook the cunt and they had no idea what was inside. Like they're getting so surprised right now. They're getting stung. Ah, oh, said the bad word. Lucas, clip it out. I was doing so good. Um, but yeah, I don't stung? know. Stung? Didn't I? St oh, wow. It's, I just say it so often that uh, that that I, didn't did you say the c good. word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? No. Yeah, <laughs> nobody yeah, yeah. It's it's nobody knows. Nobody knows. C word. That was not the C word. I de definitely was in there. People but saying in chat no. that there was a C word. So. There was no C word. There's yeah, no there definitely C word. was. But I don't know. I just think like we're not gonna like it's the same with this match fixing stuff. I don't think we're ever gonna get. I don't think we're gonna get it. I'm. I just. I don't know. I don't think we're gonna get it. Doesn't seem amazing. Like I, I think that's completely reasonable and acceptable. Like there's no oh, problem I know it's with. Not. <laughs> but like, what do what do I say? Like, I, I, I'm in the same boat. Like, I'm. Look, we've I'm been waiting for a year and a half. I'm putting 2037, but that's the same as never, essentially. That's like, like, well, these guys are going to be like divorced with kids from like three different marriages. It's like, oh, you're the guy that was match fixing in NA. It's like, who cars? Literally. Yeah. Okay. Vroom, vroom. yeah, it's going to come out from like Ian Smith's autobiography when like he, long after he leaves this business, like in 25 years or something. So 100% can agree. Striker what wins bet. I've just this locked year. two in. I've I'm locked two in this year. Yeah, I went this year and next year. I don't know. It feels inevitable. It, yep. The writing's on the wall. The money. I'm counting the pennies. I'm working out which one of my cryptos I'm taking out. I'm selling my fucking NFTs. You see, there's no pictures on the I wall. Think, I've been getting everything out of the house. You saw the think it cash only. I don't want. I don't want no fucking. NFTs or no, uh, I'll send it to you on PayPal. You got PayPal? Where are you from? I do get. I there do we go. PayPal. We can do it on PayPal. That's that's. I need it. To... You need to do it in one dollar bills. Make like a big briefcase. I should just actually. What I we should, should do it. A thing, yeah. What I should do is I should just tell you and Pimp to invoice Martin and just not put in a, an invoice for a month and then just you know get, <laughs> just get it. Yeah, just take it. Take it out. So it gets PayPal, taxed. Right? Thank you. Yeah. No, I just I said, Martin, this was all a gag, so we could have a running theme on the show. So you you actually have to fund this, right? Let's see, see if I can get it paid. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think I I feel like one of them, and this is the thing, Vitality by our rule set, Vitality don't count. But there's still so many of them, like Phase and G two. Yeah, okay. They've feels like there's a lot of potential. Together. There's yeah. potential. There's a lot of potential there. Yeah. Well, okay. when does it end? We started twenty. I mean, it's like two years. It's still twenty left. or twenty nineteen. I feel yeah, like, it was think. like I don't know. Like we, we have to go back. We have to go we, back. I had I even checked because like, not the line. I missed, out I, on, I missed out on that episode because I was traveling from some event. Uh, so it had to be 2019 it's because 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2019 because I remember that was like around the time when Mao's were like looking like they could get there. You know, with a couple of more months. So I think it was like late 2019 when we did this. I feel like it was early. Maybe like second half of 2019. I think it was it's it. possible, oh, no. maybe. I, I think someone's Twitch clipped it. Someone's made it uh, three years ago. Yeah. All right, so we have two more years. Yeah. So yeah. it's like fuck. I could hold out. Well, you I could. could hold you out. could win this. You come could on, win Navi. this. It's not impossible. Three years is a long time. Come on, Gambit. Come on, VP. Keep it's, the wolf at the door. It's just about it's just about Phase and G two not being super consistent. Like they're gonna be in the top three for some portions of time, but will they hold on for six months? That's that's the question. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. All right. All right. Look, uh, like I said, if it's vitality, I'll take I'll take it out of premise. Yeah, but that's the thing. Not, I'm not, get past look, official I'll, I'll judges, give you the money. Mate. Look, I'll give you the money. Like I'll I'll accept that I lost the bet, but I will I will take it as a victory. There's a lot of scrutiny from the judges around here. I'll have to get a couple of people on the line. I've got commissioners all around the place. I think Graham Messio, so Pitt normally weighs in on situations like this, so we might have to get him on the phone or Mihal Slavinsky, one of the two. So we we will have to get a someone to dissect the rules. No COVID issues. 
Oh, well, right now, stake your political allegiance right now in the sand, Prof, with your answer this say, one. I say next year. That's my feeling. I say next year. This year, definitely, we'll still have a lot of, a lot of, um, how, how do I put it? It's just delicacy around the topic. Issues. I feel like next year, it could yeah. be. It could be a thing that's just like, it is whatever, you know. I've been telling this to my mum for two years now. It's like, yeah, it's all right, mum. COVID will clear up. I'll come, <laughs> I'll come home. I'll come home soon. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the, the trajectory makes it seem like, you know, more, more countries are going along the lines of, you know, we don't really care about this illness anymore. Not, you know, to the level where we're the fact willing that Denmark to go. and Sweden have done it, right? Like, exactly. Like it says it, and there's more. somebody said Lithuania even. I don't know if that's actually true. Somebody said that some at some points. Um uh, interesting. And then somebody can confirm confirm or deny. I actually don't know. I'm just repeating some some something somebody somebody else said. But anyway, like it's if if this is the trajectory we're gonna go go on to, I think by then by next year we're just gonna that's just gonna be the norm. Okay. And the final one here, uh, no major clashes. Well, as we discerned earlier, that is never going to happen. Never. There will always be some form of a clash. That's just lying. Um, so, uh, all right, let's, let's wind that one up. That was the uh, Parry Match Matchmaker segment. Lucas, you have a throwback Ex three actually, years ago. If, yeah. if, uh, if people remember this, this uh, was around the same time you made the bet. Uh, it's gonna be the sniper snipe cam. Oh my God, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Why was that still on? This was we've had some ludicrous stuff go on down, but it is look at it. It's not bad. You could like this is like a Crunker IO simulator or some shit. Looks like going down here, and it's kind of a even a throwback to not a throwback, but it's kind of a shout out to oh, the major coming up, right? Yeah. Same country. We're gonna probably gonna fly through Charleroi Airport to go to Antwerp. So True. there we go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that's why do, keep people, why do people keep saying that? It's like half an hour away from the Brussels airport. I might just Is drive. It? Yeah. I might just drive from Malta. You're literally, it's I pretty think you're easy. close. Drive to... from Malta. I mean, uh, me and okay. Buck were thinking about driving, and that's like 11 hours again. I'll, go, just... I'll go in a van. I'll go on a boat across, probably up Italy, and then drive the way up. I have to get a new driver's license, I think. All right, Prof, did we get any interesting uh, questions from the community? Look, I, I'll be completely honest. I did not look at the questions. All but... right. Uh, I mean, I have been looking at them recently, like recently we've actually been really good at answering the questions from the people. So I think I'll just take this on the chin. I'll apologize. Sorry for everyone that put any questions, uh, forward because I didn't look essentially. All right. Well, that's fair enough. Can um, we get prof fired, please? If somebody, yes. if somebody at home is listening and they are of the age to remember the television show until uh, I've, I've referenced this before. It was Clay Stopmation, Postman Pat. If anybody okay. at home is creative enough to make Postman Prof with the intro song, uh, you probably could, I don't know, uh, of some variety. You get, get creative. Um, we can give we them can... an extra five miles. We have one to give away. Yeah, okay. If they go to a lot of effort, yeah, and then maybe we can turn it into a bumper for uh, for the mailbag segment and and postman prof and in the postman pat has a black and white cat but i'm sure we can get you something else like i'm sure okay. we can i'm definitely sure we can get you something there there's, um, there's been a couple of songs on the forums recently there is that um great uh, albanian guy and then unbent on band that guy jonathan e remove my ben and then recently that's a there's, great song there's another like hltv blues that i saw that someone made it's also jonathan pretty cool e, remove my band uh, <laughs> it's a catchy I actually, track. I actually don't remember that. I'm gonna post it in chat around. for everybody. Really good. Jonathan E. Remove my band. It's a good song. It's a good tune. Um, he enjoys himself out there. It's had 11,000 views. So if you want to check it out, uh, you you just have the link right now. Um, boys, that's probably it. That's probably yeah, that's the end it. of the show. But we, we, if anybody has any good questions now, ask them in chat. I'm going to give you about 30 to 60 seconds as, um, yeah, strike. As I have one. Yeah, you got one? I found it on forums, literally top of top of the recent activity now. Vexite okay. better than JKS, question mark? Yes, Vexide question mark. I hope he gets picked up by a good team. Vexite's pretty good. Uh, he was joining me and Josie as we've been playing some pugs the last days. Uh, he's 16, so I'm literally 17. twice his age. Um, but you know, I, I was playing with him and he's, he's definitely sharp. So it'd be exciting to see 
what happens. I'd actually, if I if I wasn't committed to casting for the next couple of years, I'd actually consider going home and trying to make a team with like Justin and a couple of players. I I I I have a picture of a team that I'd try and make. I wouldn't play, guys. Don't worry. I'd I'd coach. There wouldn't be. But Vexo is pretty good. I think he can be pretty good. It's exciting to see what's what's happening down there. Um, did anyone ask any good questions? Fine. In your opinion, when will your kinder join phase? Like asking how long is a piece of string? Like the, the, the <laughs> I, I love the I love the the I, I got a new I actually put I'm on my new phone now, everybody. I'm just giving life updates. I had this for almost two months and just in the box because I get anxiety when it comes to doing something new. Because I'm fucked in the head. Um it, should I tell people about my freezer? Maybe as well. I feel like we're not giving enough content tonight, prof. We're not doing a three hour show. No, it's fine. Like we we should be, like, you know. we should lower the expectations a bit. Like I, I know it's also we always, Saturday, guys. We always over deliver, but it's time to to kind of fuck off. And uh I'll ask yeah. you about the phone. I need some phone tips. So I wanted to buy the new Galaxy, but it seems to not be that amazing. It just it's the came same out. With this Pixel. It's not it's not amazing. Uh, it's, just, it's okay. It's fine. It and nice. then if uh, if things allow, then we do a show or two live from Katowice. Uh, it w- won't be anything with like a live audience uh, just because of COVID and all these things. But hopefully, you know, by the major, maybe we do that, that kind of a show. That's, That'd be kind, nice. of, that's kind of the big goal that we, that we have for this year. Nice. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I'm going to go finish packing my bag and empty out the freezer. So in case the power goes out while I'm away this time, I don't have rotten meat. Uh, on return to Malta. So hope everybody enjoyed the show. Quick shout out again to the uh, sponsors, Parimatch. Uh, we've obviously got Bitskins and of course, Extrify sponsoring the show. Anchor.fm slash HLTV. If you guys want to check out the audio only options, Lucas is great at getting those VODs and the uh, podcast up as quickly as possible. Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, many, many more, all that good shit right there. And uh, yeah, enjoy Katowice. We will see you guys again next time. Good night. Add some fun to your space with Extrify, designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4, their fourth generation of products with super cool colorways to stand out, with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 bungee, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with Extrify. No regrets. Guaranteed. These bombs go to the teammates. I want to see you fall them fast. Win the round. Win the game. Parry match. Your esports teammate. teammate. Stuck ranking up. Lost the motivation to grind. Bored of clicking heads on AIM maps? Get some color into your game. Bitskins.com. Buying and selling skins made easy. Tons of payment methods and instant cash outs. Just choose your dream skins, select your preferred payment method, and start grinding again. If you want to play like the pros, you've got to look like the pros. 